Field, I'm with running backs coach Tim Rude, and I gotta tell you, you've gotta be riding a big high from last week, but there's another opponent. A championship has been secured, at least half of it, but there's a job to be done today. Absolutely, and you definitely want to send the seniors out on the right note. Uh, GNAC championship is amazing, you know, once in a lifetime kind of feeling as far as we go, uh, but we got business to take care of. You know, we want to finish strong for our guys. Going all the way back to August and some of those dog days of August practices, talk about the identity of this team from the offensive line to obviously some of your success and great success between Ty, Omari, and Nico this season. Uh, you said it, this all starts up front. You know, we got two elite tackles. Uh, you know, Jacob Pruitt doing a great job up the center, and then we've got a few different guys stepping at guard. They're clearing paths, man. So, you know, Omari and Nico and, you know, Andrew Valdez are, are pumping out yards and, and killing it, and then Ty doing what he does, you know, when he gets out and going with his legs over the center of his arm. I mean, it's been it's been amazing, and it's real it's real awesome to make those have those guys make me look so good, you know, when uh, they're doing all the work. They're awesome. Uh, get you out on this. I mean, it's a two-to-one advantage you have on the ground, time of possession. You guys have been winning it. Talk about your execution, especially leading the conference in third down conversions? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with our, our comfortable uh, level of comfortability with fourth down. You know, we, uh, we're not scared to, on fourth down. We're, we're willing to go for it, we're willing to run the football, um, and we're willing to take chances and go win games. Tim Rude, running backs coach for Western Oregon University, co GNAC champions. We'll be back with more on KWVT Channel 17. Searching the Northwest. Good afternoon, to bring everyone. You the Look. biggest variety in sports. Northwest Television Sports brings you the rejoicing of victory, the frustration of defeat, the drama of competition. This is Northwest Sports. Northwest Television Sports is proud to bring you Western Oregon University coming up next. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to MacArthur Field. I'm Matt Palumbo alongside Michael Brown for KWVT. It's senior day here, and we are coming off a thrilling victory a week ago against Azusa Pacific that delivered Western Oregon its first co-championship in GNAC history. Uh, what a great week last week, a thrilling finish. Uh, today we're looking for Western Oregon to come out strong against Eastern New Mexico. Uh, senior day, military appreciation day and uh, just hope they can come out strong and, and finish the season well after that thrilling victory last week. It's a block fuel goal that delivers that title to Western Oregon. Michael, though, one of the special things this season for this team has been its running attack, third down conversions. They lead the conference now, 52 total third down conversions at a 40% clip. It's got to be a hallmark of a, of a special team and a special season. A special team, special season. Ty Curry coming out strong all the time at quarterback. He can run the ball. Nico Jackson, Amari Land. It's a, it's a great running squad, and uh, again, today running behind those offensive line to see if they can continue doing what they've been doing all season. Michael also mentioned it is Military Appreciation Day. Michael wants a special shout out to a good friend of ours. Uh, good friend of ours for 25 years, uh, Chief Warrant Officer Ford, James Rickards at Fort Lewis right now. Getting towards the end of his career, I'd like to give a special shout out to him and say thank you for your service over the last 20 years, and I hope you, I hope you enjoy your retirement and the next chapter of your life. Football action coming up next on KWVT, Channel 17. Everybody, welcome to MacArthur Field. Matt Palumbo alongside Michael Brown. Hey, I'm still glowing from a week ago. Co-conference champions after a 23-21 victory over Azusa Pacific and the block field goal by Michael Proctor Jr. Michael, I mean, we can talk about last week, but let's talk about this week. It's senior day. Senior day, military appreciation week after uh, Veterans Day this week. Uh, it's, it's exciting to be here in Monmouth to, to see this final game of the season for Western Oregon. Western Oregon 7-3 and three on the season looking to end this campaign with a victory at home and an eighth victory over Eastern New Mexico and the Greyhounds. We're going to see a steady dose of running the football today, Michael, according to the coaching staff for Western Oregon. The Greyhounds are going to be on the ground 90% of the time. Yeah, interesting. They go four wide a lot of the time, but they do run the ball. 
Run, run, run. You're going to see them doing that the whole time. Uh, again, with Western Oregon doing the same thing. It could be a quick game, but uh, expect a lot of fun action today, especially with, uh, again, being the final game of the season for both these teams. Can hear the crowd giving ovation to the 12 seniors that are being commemorated on the field. Eastern New Mexico has just got onto the field, and football action is soon to come up here. But right now, Michael, uh, take special attention to maybe a couple players right off of the bat. Ty Curry getting his third player of the week in the conference after an uh, amazing game in the air and on the ground a week ago. Yeah, an amazing game. Uh, all season long, Ty Curry has been in control of this offense. The run, play, uh, pass offense, uh, run, excuse me, uh, play action passes, letting him run the ball with the option. He is all over the place, handing the ball off to Nico Jackson and Amari Land. Uh, it's always exciting. And now we'll take a moment for our national anthem. Western Oregon University marching band for playing the national anthem. Well, it's senior day. A seven and three record and co-conference championship for the Western Oregon Wolves. And there is plenty to play for this afternoon for the 12 seniors that will be graduating from Western Oregon come this spring. And Michael, Mr. Tyler Reed is now a newly minted, uh, well, engaged man. It's a way to a really fun way to celebrate Senior Day for sure by proposing and uh, getting a good cheer for everybody. That's awesome. That was that was fun to see. Everybody out in the middle of the field, they're getting ready for the coin toss. This is a long road trip for the Greyhounds coming from Eastern New Mexico, Michael. And one of the things that we were reading about was they play in the Lone Star Conference on turf all the time. And it's going to be a new thing for them, actually, to have a natural turf game and play on the grass. Play on the grass. A uh, little bit of a damp field today with the fog and the cloud, uh, right. cloudy day that we're having. What's your favorite? Of course, that's Curtis Choice in the second half. Eastern New Mexico will receive in the north end zone. All right, fellas, let's have a great game. Wolves win the toss, Michael, and they will defer to the second half. They'll be kicking away to the Greyhounds. Greyhounds owning a six and four record on the season, four and four in that very difficult Lone Star Conference. And gosh, Michael, how many times have we seen teams from the Lone Star Conference this year? It feels like uh, just about as many as uh, our actual GNAC Conference games. For sure, it's uh, just a back and forth series between the Lone Star Conference and the GNAC. Um, a lot of teams playing each other this year and it's been some really fun action. Uh, again, uh, a lot of similar opponents, but for each team for sure. And uh, again, balanced teams. They both played uh, the teams pretty close to the same. So it should make a really fun game today. Pretty amazing statistics are going to come out of this Eastern New Mexico team. Looking at their kind of running back chart, Michael, they're going to see a steady dose of three, if not four, different running backs and a team that dominates time of possession. Actually, nationally, maybe the tops actually in the entire country. Again, we were talking about in the pregame, could be a very quick game. Obviously, Western Oregon noted this year for its two to one advantage on the ground as Andrew Gross is set to kick it away on Senior Day and Military Appreciation Day here. Clean kick around the 10 yard line and New Mexico will have its first possession of the day. Would be tacklers trying to get 
to the Greyhounds, but they'll take their first possession around the 22-yard line. Yeah, just a simple return, a good job by the Western Oregon defense, uh, special teams units to start out the day. Uh, good tackle and a first down and 10 at the 22-yard line for the Greyhounds. Wyatt Strand is the quarterback, Michael. He's only thrown the ball 107 times. So I would imagine that Strand will be handing the ball off, like we said, multiple ways. They run a wing T and veer offense, something that Western Oregon has yet to see. Not much on first down, as Zachary Fields looked like he took the handoff. That stout center of the defense for Western Oregon, just stopping at the line of scrimmage, no gain, uh, short gain of three yards. Second and seven for Eastern New Mexico. Nice play up the middle for the Greyhound offense. They'll push the ball out near first down yard. It'll be third and manageable, it looks like here. Nope, they're going to move the chains, Michael. A very nice run. And they'll like to keep it on the ground just to keep the ball out of Western Oregon's hands. See a lot of this today. Terry with the carry. Pick up four or five yards on first down. And this New Mexico, Eastern New Mexico Greyhound team coming out very effective on the ground. Very quick, back to the line of scrimmage. Little pitch out. And Joey Roos was trying to come up back. It was Sinclair. They hit the corner. He's at the 40. And right now, the Greyhounds are looking very efficient on this opening drive. And you see the quarterback has the option to hold the ball or pass it off. Gets it to Johnny Smith, who makes his way down the sideline with some great blocking. It's very important for the defensive end to have contain on these, and if he stays and goes for the quarterback, the quarterback will pitch it each time, and you need the safeties and quarterbacks to come up and make a tackle at the line. It didn't happen on that play. Look for the Western Oregon defense to adjust here. Strand will hand it off again, and this time nothing going at all, and Terry taken to the ground. Going to be a lot of pressure on the <laughs> linebacking core today. because For sure, you, they have you, to you come up and fill those holes and make sure they make a strong tackle there. It was done a great job there on first down. Second and 10 on the 40-yard line. Just past two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Look like the change of call here by Strand. Strand will keep it himself. Sinclair with the tackle, or at least half the tackle. And a good job there by the defense, at least holding them to a short gain of five yards, but it does set up a more manageable third down for Eastern New Mexico here with a third and five yards. Offensive line play for the Greyhounds so far, very good, getting openings for their running attack. And it's a late pitch. And everybody staying home, and Joey Sinclair with back-to-back -back tackles. Yeah, heck of a job by Sinclair there. He sees it's the option is again like they've been running the whole day, but he's up there really fast, gets in the backfield, makes a tackle for a loss, setting up a fourth and about six yards for Eastern New Mexico. And it looks like they're keeping their offense on the field going forward here on fourth down. Interesting. Vargas doesn't come out to kick. You know, this will be a different game with both teams being non-conference matchup at the end of the season. You might as well let it all hang out today. Fourth and six on the 36. Greyhounds need to get down to the 30. Strand checks the sideline and will recalibrate this offensive play. And there is going to be a timeout by New Mexico. We'll time step Time out, away. Eastern New Mexico. Their first time out of the half. We'll step away for a break here on KWVT, Channel 17. The Greyhounds' first possession started on their own 22-yard line. They've matriculated down the field to Western Oregon's 36. Fourth down and six, 11-32 on the clock in this opening quarter between non-conference opponents. The Greyhounds and Wolves doing action here on KWVT. Channel 17, Wyatt Strand under center. And he's going to pass on fourth down. He's got trouble. He lost it up into the air. An unbelievable... I can't believe that play, Michael. That is the true definition of a wounded duck. Yeah, the defense did everything it wanted to there except uh, coverage down the field with a 
pass being very underthrown after the rush on the quarterback. So funny. I wanted to actually say, like, coming right out of this thing, this feels like a day where Braylon Evans or Curtis Anderson on a bad throw could get a pick six, and it felt like when that ball went in the air, that should have been something that either got knocked down or yeah, intercepted, looked, but there's a player down on the far side of the field for the Greyhounds. Yeah, it looks like Justin Manyweather, the player who was able to get under that ball and make that catch and get a first down for the Greyhounds, was injured on that play. But again, uh, that's a fluke play. There's uh, not much you can do in that defensive backfield when the ball is so, so much underthrown. They have good coverage. But when they don't see where the ball is going, that receiver is able to get under it and get a first down. Mayweather's 15th reception on the season averages nearly 16 yards a catch. Very fluky first down with 11.20 on the clock as it stopped. Mayweather able to get up and get off the field under his own power, and that is a good sign. And you'll say what Western Oregon has on defense here today with uh, the Greyhounds in the red zone on their first drive of the day. It's time for the Western Oregon defense to step up if they can. Wolves defense been stretched from side to side with this option offense from Eastern New Mexico, but they'll hand it up the middle on first down. And again, great push coming from the offensive line. Great push by the offensive line, working their way up four or five yards at a time. It'll be second, it looks like six yards. The Placing the ball, looks like on the 15 seven. yard line. Three yards picked up on first down, second down and seven. As Michael says, Strand still underneath center. And he's gonna pitch it out to the right. And hitting the corner, going inside the five yard line. So far, Michael, very impressive opening drive as Johnny Smith almost takes it in. Yeah, Strand decides to pitch it. Curtis Anderson trying to get over there as he's being blocked. And then good job by Johnny Smith working his way down inside the five yard line. It'll be first and goal for Eastern New Mexico. Terry behind Strand. There goes Johnny Smith in motion. Terry falls short of the goal line, and Joey Sinclair helmet in there again. Joey Sinclair all over the field so far in this first drive, but again, they're just running right up the middle, trying to see if they can find some space, pick up a short gain of one yard, and right back to the line of scrimmage is Eastern New Mexico. Joey Sinclair going to be a part of this Wolves offense or defense for a long time, only a sophomore. Smith in motion. Terry gets the ball and walks in for the six points. And the Greyhounds are on the board first, Michael, and they made that look rather pedestrian and easy. Yeah, with one yard to go, uh, pretty easy for him off the left tackle, just right into the end zone. A good start for Eastern New Mexico when they've traveled a long way up here to the PDX and then take a bus to <laughs> the stadium here. But they came out strong, got a touchdown on the first drive. 78-yard touchdown drive accomplished by the Greyhounds. The kick is up and with 9.45 on the clock. It is 7 to nothing. We'll step away for a break here on KWVT Channel 17. Welcome to MacArthur Field. Michael Brown, Matt Palumbo here for KWVT. Western Oregon taking one on the chin on their opening drive there. The Greyhounds take it 77 yards. It's a one-yard touchdown run for Paul Terry. And the visitors are leading 7 to nothing. Curtis Anderson and Marcus Sampson are back deep. See if they can get some good field position for Ty Curry on his last day as the starting quarterback at Western Oregon University. And what a senior season it has been for Curry. Anderson gets the kick at the 15. He's got some momentum looking for a block. Gets out to around the 35 yard line. Good field position to start for Western Oregon. Was a little bit of moisture the last couple of days. Talk to people at the field attendance level. There's a lot of sand out in the field. They chewed it up pretty good, they said, in practice. So footing could be an issue here early on in the game, but very dry, and maybe we'll even see some sunshine as it is still an overcast and foggy day. Nico Jackson, the senior, getting the start in the backfield along with Ty Curry.
Curry in the shotgun. Thomas right at the bottom of your field. And they give the ball off to Jackson. Jackson runs off the right side. And the senior that wears number seven with his signature hair picks up about three yards on first down. And we'll see a lot of that today with Nico Jackson running up the middle, Amari Land as well. And then you have all the different receivers or, or just scat back players that they can put in and do a lot of different things with, with as the day goes along. They gave Nico a little bit extra on that. Jackson will get five yards on his opening carry this afternoon. Jackson, the third leading rusher on a very, very good running team Western has been all season. Jackson again on second down, cuts away, gets to the outside, but the sideline becomes an extra defender as he's run out of bounds. Nico looking for a hole up the middle, not able to see anything, works his way down the, the line of scrimmage, which you don't always want to do, but it's better than taking a loss. He does pick up a short gain of one yard. It'll be third and four yards for Western Oregon here. See if they can pick up a first down. Jaron Ford, Tyler Reed, Marquise Sampson trips to your left of Ty Curry with Nico Jackson. And it looks like Tom is right at the top of your screen. Third down and three on the 42. They give to Jackson up the middle, and Jackson just puts his head down and moves the chains. Rory just decides to run over the defender there to pick up the first down. Great job by Nico Jackson. And Western Oregon looking to uh, get this drive going here in the first quarter. Moving towards midfield, Omari Land, the leading rusher for Western Oregon, enters the game. Omari Land, 49 yards away from a 1,000-yard season. That would be quite a feather in the cap of Omari Land, who is just starting his career at Western Oregon. They give it right to him. He goes right up the middle and really old school football right now, Michael. Just run forward, north and south. Just pound, pound, pound. And a good pickup on first down of about five yards. Yeah, between Omari and Nico Jackson, there's no reason. Just keep handing them the ball. Stay behind that offensive line that's been doing a great job all season and just work your way down the field. Matriculate, as you said earlier. <laughs> Wolves are already in eastern New Mexico territory on their opening drive, trailing 7 to nothing. if you're just joining us. Curry, he'll keep it himself, runs off the left side, and number 14 almost might get that first down. Looks like nine yards, might be just short. You see him very elusive there, making a couple men miss. Working his way up to, yes, it looks like just short of the first down, setting up a third, right back to the line of scrimmage is Western Oregon. Curry gives it to Land. Land, now oh, Curry fakes me out again. He'll extend to get himself the first down, but Curry really getting very efficient with that RPO. Looking like he could have broken that for something big, but I believe Devon Conyers of Eastern New Mexico coming up to trip him up just past the first down though. So Western Oregon, another four downs here to see if they can get down the field. Again, we were talking about this. We kind of went through this experience last week, Michael. Again, we're already halfway through the first quarter. <laughs> These teams on the ground eat up a lot of clock. Curry now looking to throw for the first time and he's in trouble, he's gonna be sacked. I think he wanted to go get some relief there and get the ball out to land, but just chose not to throw the ball. Yeah, land in the flat. It looks like he has some time for him, but right away the pocket breaks down. He decides to tuck it, and they're already in the backfield for a sack, bringing up a second and long, second and 15 for Western Oregon. Again, getting the linebackers from the Greyhound defense to maybe move up. There could be some play action opportunities for Curry to get some of these receivers some shots down the field. Is use, use the speed of those outside receivers for sure. Second and 14 on the 47 underneath. Tyler Reed gets the ball. He gets away from three tacklers and picks up about 11 and a half to 12 yards. Yeah, great play just over the middle there. Tyler Reed, Ty Curry sees him open right away, gets it to him, and then he uses his speed and tries to work his way down the field. And he does picking up a good gain there of about 10 yards, setting up second and five yards for Western Oregon, pick up the first down. 11 yards on the pickup for the newly engaged Tyler Reed. Congratulations once again. Four wide receivers now out to the left of Curry. Now Marquis Sampson in motion, a little decoy, and they go to him on a little 
I love that little wheel route, Michael, and they almost hit a home run with that. They do pick up the first down. Yeah, a play, a look that they look like all season where Marquise is coming across the line. He usually gets handed it off the ball, but this time he works his way to the flat. Ty Curry finds him wide open, picks up a first down. Great play there by Western Oregon as their drive continues. This is for you, Michael, but it's also for Brian Harris, offensive coordinator. I'm sorry I don't know say enough about the job you've done this season. Coach Harris, great play call there for the first down. Ty Curry with a fresh set of downs on the 29-yard line with Nico Jackson back in the game. Jackson doesn't get it, and Curry's looking to go off the edge, turns it to the 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Wolves! A 29-yard scamper, Ty Curry for the touchdown! Using Nico as a decoy, Ty Curry holds on to the ball, almost gets tripped up right at the line of scrimmage, works his way down the field. Marquis Sampson with a great block down the field and a touchdown for the Wolves on their first drive to start out the day. Great job by the Wolves offense. A quick response coming from Western Oregon and on senior day, Ty Curry's 11th touchdown of the season. Andrew Gross's kick coming up next to tie the game. Gross with a low line drive and it is good and this game is not enough at seven. We'll step away for a break for more first quarter action on KWVT Channel 17. The Wolves strike back quick. Curry, the 29 yard touchdown, 10 plays, 66 yards on five minutes and eight seconds of time taken off of the clock. Game knotted up at seven. Curry had over 100 yards in quarter number one against the Sousa Pacific, and he's starting off hot today, Michael. Do. And now it's time for the special teams to come out, try to pin them deep. Greyhound will have their second possession, and they're gonna get decent field position. Looking across the field, Michael, I am going to try to figure this out. Next year, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to get a spotter. I'm telling you right now, Michael. <laughs> or I'm going to start wearing glasses. It looks like it was Dexter Carter. Dexter Carter, yes. But it does set them up at the 30-yard line, and they had great success just running the ball down the middle on, on these option plays on the first drive, and you'll see them try to continue the same thing, see what adjustments Western Oregon has made. Strand did have an actual completion on the first drive. It was a 17-yard completion to Mayweather. Penalty flags on the play. Looks like there might be some infractions on the start. Offense, number 52, five-yard penalty. It's first down. Backing him up five yards. It'll be first down and 15 after the false start. Hunter St. John. I wasn't going to do it, but uh, I let you I let you take care of that one. <laughs> Ball now on the 26-yard line. Four minutes and 27 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And on the pitch, Greyhounds looking to get out towards a 30. But again, great. Oh, kept it in bounds. Johnny Smith, elusive. Curtis Anderson went for the hit and just missed it. That yeah, Curtis Anderson, usual uh, sure tackler there, just does get juke just enough as Johnny Smith spins out of that tackle. Working his way down the sideline to pick up a couple extra yards. But just a short gain there for Eastern New Mexico of one yard. Looks like second and nine for the Greyhounds. Great camera work on the ground. Second down and nine. Michael is correct on the 32-yard line. In a game, tied up at seven. Smith's in motion. They're going to pitch it out again to Terry. And Terry gets the 40. He gets a block and pushed out of bound by Braylon Evans. Braylon Evans, one of those 12 seniors today, came here from Montana State, but been a very, very effective season for number two. Yeah, it looks like they're going to run up the middle, but it's actually a pitch, and that movement up the middle is enough to suck in some of the defenders. They worked their way down the sideline for a first down as Eastern New Mexico continues with this dominating run game in this first quarter. Getting to the edges and showing a lot of speed. Wyatt Strand, again, looking over to the sideline, changing up the play. Smith and Terry are going to be the primary carriers of the ball. And they give it to Terry again, and he'll move the ball deeper into Western Oregon territory around the 45-yard line. Yeah, as they're running this triple option, it's always uh, good to run the ball up the middle every once in a while to keep everybody honest and keeping them off the edge. And that's when they decide to run the, the option play to the outside. And 
get these big hitters as they have so far in this first quarter. In a situation like this defensively, Michael, would you see Western Oregon maybe put more people up in the box as this game goes on? And that's when Eastern New Mexico runs a play-action pass and throws it over the top. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's the chess game of football. Strand's going to keep it. And that was an emphatic tackle. But right as you say <laughs> that, you see Curtis Anderson in the backfield. So he came up closer along with Haig and I believe Worf there in the backfield as well. But... Stopped at the line of scrimmage, setting up a third and seven for Eastern New Mexico to pick up a first down. Tyler Worf, the Mike linebacker. Mike, tell people that that is, actually. Uh, depends on the terminology. <laughs> Did they name it after me? No, nah, I think it's a middle linebacker. <laughs> Maybe made famous by somebody like, yeah, somebody by the name of Singletary. Man in motion again. Strand hands it off. And there is nothing happening there. Parnell, Haig. Mac Little also back there as well. As you see a whole group going to tackle him there. Great group tackling, great job by the defense. And you see the special teams for Eastern New Mexico come out. And it looks like there will be a change of uh, possession here. Tyler Vargas, senior, 5'10", 185 pounder. Vargas is going to have his 32nd punt, averages around 40 yards a kick, and has a long of 54 this season. And back deep, Derek Parnell. Again, a part of the group of seniors today. Parnell having a great second half of the season in the defensive backfield, breaking up several passes. Now an opportunity on special teams and a penalty flag everywhere. One, two, three. There's Prior four. to the false start. Delay a game, kicking team, five yard penalty, it's fourth down. And you don't know, we'll find out very shortly, but whether or not they just want that extra five yards to have some more space. Or Parnell is lining up, uh, yeah. Maybe able to sink that inside the 10 yard line for the Eastern New Mexico special teams. I was gonna say, Derek Parnell looks like he has a little respect for Vargas's leg here. No wind to be spoken of, so. Low snap, Vargas' kick is up. Parnell is calling for the fair catch and he'll get it right at the 15 yard line. Very effective kick from the Greyhounds, but Western Oregon now will come out for its second possession and see if they can take the lead. And just the same as uh, Eastern New Mexico on that drive, you'll see Western Oregon come out and run the ball, try to set up their play action game and work the work their way down the field with their fast receivers. But again, it's going to be Nico and Amari Land and Ty Curry running the ball a lot as well. Michael, I know you were showing me something during the break. I know there are some interested spectators out there about the Central Washington and Simon Fraser game today. Obviously, if Central Washington were to lose, it would give Western Oregon an outright GNAC title. What's the score of that game? Let me double check here. <laughs> Curry now in the shotgun on first and 10. Pitches it out to Land. Land cuts it back up. And there's going to be a late penalty flag in the area of holding. And uh, some more bad news for Western Oregon on this. It is 21 to nothing right now in the beginning of the second quarter for Central Washington leading Simon Frazier. During the run, holding offense number 56, half the distance to the goal. It's first down. Aaron Turner, another senior. Not the best shot at the beginning of, uh, of the game here for him, but uh, all season long, the offensive line has done a great job, especially Aaron Turner. Joseph Gonzalez, the seniors on that offensive line. Now backed up to the eight yard line. Wolves in under a minute left in the first quarter in a, in a game tied at seven. Omari Land did lose his footing there, Michael, and almost lost the football. Yeah, as he's uh, getting tackled right at the line of scrimmage. He tries to spin out of that, but it just picks up a short gain. It looks like second and 17 for Western, but the time running out of the clock, it may be the last play of the quarter. Looks like it. They picked up three yards. It'll be second down and 15, and Western Oregon will head to the sideline in a game that saw a steady dose of running the ball by both teams, and fittingly enough, it's tied at seven after 15 minutes. That we'll is the end of the first quarter. For the start of the second quarter after this break on KWVT Channel 17.
Well, seven to seven on senior day and military appreciation day. Western Oregon finding themselves in a bit of a tough situation. Second down and 14 ball on the 11 yard line. Both teams coming out and being able to run the ball effectively. Michael, something I talked about in the pregame with you, good sign so far. Western Oregon, three opportunities on third down and have converted all three on their opening possession. Curry now in the shotgun with Amari Land. And Curry is going to throw, surveying the middle, goes underneath. And again, Superman. He's turning into his signature play there, reaching up in the air. And see Murphy running across the field, just using that length and getting up there, pulling that ball down. A first down for Western Oregon. Great pass by Ty Curry. And they continue their drive. Excuse me, second down, just short of the first down. Justice Murphy, honorable mention for top plays actually in all of Division II sp uh, football a week ago. Michael, a great call, calling that the Superman catch, probably the catch of the year here at Western Oregon. Land now in the backfield at third and one. And they're going to hand it to Amari Land. He goes straight up the middle. And I don't think he gets turned away, Michael. I think they're going to give him forward progress. See shortly, they're coming up. They may have a measurement here. As the interior line was able to make a tackle Andrew there right Gross at the line came of scrimmage. Right out. They didn't even budge. And you see the special teams units come out for Western Oregon, so it looks like Eastern New Mexico will get the ball back with a great tackle there right at the line of scrimmage. Gross now will kick it. His 32nd punt on the year, averaging 38.52 yards. His long for the season, 56. The left footer gets one off, end over end. And looking for a good bounce, and he gets it, Michael, but it's still going to be nice field position as the Greyhounds will take over at the 36-yard line as that drive stalled out after the nice catch from Murphy. And you see you have two even teams, uh, two teams with a lot of talent, some playmakers on both sides of the ball, and both teams with a touchdown on their first drive and a punt on their second drive. And you'll see what Eastern New Mexico can come out and do on the third drive now after these adjustments have been made. Basically, the Greyhound success comes from running the ball nine out of ten times. Wyatt Strand basically has any number of players that he can choose and even call his own number 16 if you'd like to from time to time. Strand underneath center. And there's going to be, looks like another delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense number 16. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. And the kind of mistakes you don't want to have when you're on the road, you travel across the country to play a game, and it is the final game of the season. We hope to see less penalties uh, the rest of this game as they've been plaguing both teams all season. Yeah, Western Oregon a week ago almost really got in a pickle with those penalties. And now Strand's going to throw. He's got all the time he wants, and he's got a deep ball. And he's got a man over the top, and he gets it, and I think this is going in. Wonderful throw. 69-yard touchdown. Plenty of time for Strand as he's looking down the field. He's waiting for his receiver to try to get some separation. Double covered and throws it over the top. Curtis Anderson reaching up to try to knock that ball away. Unfortunately, not able to do it. And a touchdown for Eastern New Mexico to take the lead back in this game. Well, Zachary Fields got all the way over the top, from untouched. Great pass from Strand there. It was perfect, exactly where it needed to be with two, two defensive backs on that receiver. Maybe they don't have the personnel to throw, but that sure looked good on that play. Kick is up, and it is good. And the Greyhounds are now on top, 14 to seven. We'll be back for more second quarter action here on KWVT Channel 17. Western Oregon's defensive backfield all year really hasn't been tested all that much. And on a team that they expected to run the ball, get beat over the top on a 69-yard touchdown pass to Zachary Fields from Wyatt Strand. One play, 64 yards, I guess, 11 seconds. I think there were two plays, but 14 to seven is the score here to start the second quarter. Short kick here from the Greyhounds. And underneath it is Marquis Sampson. He's at the 30, looking for a block, turns it up field, and he kind of just runs right into the tackle. 
Looked like he had an opening there for a second, but uh, yeah, taken down, but good field position to start. And uh, again, on that last play for Eastern New Mexico, a lot of credit goes to that offensive line as they run a play action pass. And it took a while for that receiver to develop his route down the field, but the offensive line protected Strand and he had enough time to get the ball down the field. Now it's Western Oregon's time to bring their powerful offense and see if they can get back in this game and tie the game up. Feels like Western Oregon may be just getting its footing into this game, obviously coming out and scoring on their first drive to match the visitors' scoring drive to start this game. And Curry's going to the air. He's flushed out. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. And he wanted a lot more, but again, that footing issue that we were talking about falls to the ground. As so did a flag in the backfield, so this play may be coming back. We'll see shortly. And the players are walking back, so it does look like there will be a hold on that play. Personal foul. Block ball to waste. Offense number seven. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's first down. And you have Nico Jackson in the backfield, pass protecting. And I did not see him on the play, but uh, it will be a personal foul, and they're moving the ball back. The same thing that, again, has plagued Western Oregon all season. When they do have some good momentum going, they can be self-destructive and have some penalties, make the games harder to win for them this season. The decent field position nullified with the penalty, moves him back 15 yards, and now on the 21-yard line, first and 25 for the Wolves, trailing by seven. Curry gives it to Jackson. Jackson gets off the left side, tries to spin away. He'll take it out for maybe four yards. Again, another play. It looks like he's almost about to break it, but good tackling so far by Eastern New Mexico. Western Oregon getting back up to the line of scrimmage very quickly. No huddle here. It'll be second. And about 20 yards for Western Oregon. Five yards for the senior Jackson on that play. Things going in slow motion there. Curry steps up in the pocket. He'll throw it. Was looking for Thomas Wright on the out, but underthrown. And it looks like I think the ball may have been snapped a little bit early on that play. I'm looking for the receiver down the sideline. Nothing there. And Western Oregon a little choppy so far in this game. Outside of that first drive where they scored, right now they're trying to get back in the groove. Taking their time here. It's third and 20 on the 26th. They'd have to take the ball all the way out to the 46 to pick up the first down. Curry gets it, and he will be throwing pressure being shown. Goes underneath, he gets it to Reed. Reed will get it back to the original line of scrimmage and give Andrew Gross some more room to kick it away. Yeah, good, good blocking there by the offensive line, and uh, very quick passes. They had pressure coming with some linebackers blitzing, and he just finds a hole in the middle of that zone, but just for 10 yards, and the special teams units for Western Oregon and Eastern New Mexico are out there. See how this goes. Gross's last punt got a favorable bounce, but on the next play, a scoring. Now there's a penalty flag on this play. Thrown immediately when the ball was caught, Michael. What does that usually mean? It was Justin Miniweather. As fielded. he's throwing up the field, it might have been blocking down the field. One of the, one of the gunners trying to get down the field, and whoever was blocking him may have uh, held on to him, but we'll see shortly. Or it could be too many men on the field as well. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 27. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Eastern New Mexico. Devon Conyers on the outside there. So, yeah, he was called for the holding. And, again, both teams with decent field position most of the time, and they're sending themselves backwards. But Eastern New Mexico able to get that long touchdown pass on the last drive. We'll see if Western Oregon come out and play better defense on this one. Could be one of those days the defense does have to do something kind of hallmark and special right now, maybe force a turnover. Right now, the Greyhounds having easy success offensively. Haig comes up for the tackle. Haig wearing that very famous 44 for Western Oregon, but he is uh, wearing it very well this season, coming in and making some plays over the last four or five home games. A uh, pleasant surprise from him. He's been really good uh, lately, but a good job. A tackle right at the line of scrimmage, second and 10 for Eastern New Mexico. 
Lovelace and Hager on the right side of the four-man front right now. Pressure being shown by Parnell on the left and Joey Sinclair now creeping up into the box just under 11 minutes, second down and 10 on the 17. And a little bit uh, tighter formation from that defensive line nullifying any running lanes there for the Greyhound offense. Yeah, just running right up the gut there, giving it to that inside running back who does pick up a decent gain of five yards, but does set up a third and six for Eastern New Mexico. Is that right back to the line of scrimmage? Haven't thought about Strand having to throw the ball, but both times has been very effective and he's going back to throw again. He's in trouble, but he's got a lot of field in front of him. Parnell's gonna try to come up. First down's gonna be made, and Parnell will force Strand out of bounds, but not before he passes the 50-yard line. Yeah, he's looking down the field, but right away it's man-to-man, -man, and when that happens, all the DBs are covering somebody down the field. He realizes it, no backside contain, able to get down the field before Parnell knocks him out, but a very big gain and a first down for Eastern New Mexico. Strand moves the Greyhounds back into Western Oregon territory, already leading by a touchdown. And that time of possession and this defense for Western Oregon is going to be tested today. Already being tested, spending a lot of time on the field. Option. Oh! Strand lucky to get that as Haig pokes the ball away, Michael. Yeah, great job by Haig there as he's running down the line of scrimmage, mirroring the quarterback, just reaches in, pokes the ball away as the running back's about to uh, try to run down the field. Luckily for Eastern New Mexico, Strand able to get back on the ball, but a huge loss on first down, setting up. They moved it all the way back to the 38-yard line. Yeah, it's, that was a... Big time loss, 10 mm -hmm. yards. I'm gonna second say second and 20. It looks like a little bit longer than that, but we'll see. Little draw play there. Terry gets the ball, but picks up better part of a yard. Statue of Liberty look as they just hand the ball off to the receiver down low. It looks like it's gonna be some sort of rollout pass play, but a quick. Only gets a yard on the play, so third down and 19. Haig with that poke away and almost a strip fumble there. The Western Oregon's defense now coming up. See if they can put a stop to this drive. Strand's got time to throw again, but he looks to be in trouble, and this time he's going down. <laughs> and you see Proctor in the backfield, able to get a sack as Strand's working his way, looking for a receiver. And you see how elusive he is, but he's not able to get away from three defenders in the backfield there. And a huge loss and a fourth down for Eastern New Mexico as their punt team comes out. They lose another eight yards, nine yards on the play. Proctor though, Michael, in that entire linebacking court plays with a pretty big chip on their shoulder. As you know, he came out of the pile throwing at least some part or an article of clothing it looked like up in the air. Yeah, except for one game this season, the defense has gotten better by quarter every single game this season. And we have some movement on the line. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 86. Five yard penalty is fourth down. Penalty starting to mount up for the Greyhounds as their drive stalls out as Western Oregon's defense looks like they might have woken up a little bit late today, but getting back into it now. Parnell is going to be right around midfield and looking to give the Wolves offense great starting field position, trailing by seven. Little rugby style kick, and that's an acting job, good. Parnell, though, muffs the kick, and Eastern New Mexico will recover. Great job by the Eastern New Mexico special teamers getting down the field as Parnell does bobble that ball, goes to the The run to the, the field ground. is a kick was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down, Eastern New Mexico. And well, a great job down the field by Rube Henry, able to get down and recover that ball. A big, big change of momentum here as Western Oregon's defense was able to get it to a fourth and 40, but Eastern Mexico gets the ball back inside the 30-yard line. 
Well, that's it. That's that's one way to get yourself a new set of downs and move the ball deep into Western Oregon territory. A lot of people aren't familiar with that play. The uh, go to fourth and forty and see if you can get a uh, muffed ball <laughs> yeah. on the punt team. Turnover gives Wyatt Strand and his offense new life. Already up a touchdown. And they start to drive out just like they did last time, just running the ball up the middle and working that option. Trying to see if they can soften up the, the defensive line for Western Oregon and see if they can get some more, some more running lanes to get down the field. Terry and Smith today basically going to get, like I said, the lion's share of the touches. Strand, little different action there, Michael, off of the right-hand side. And they're going to pick up first down yardage, it looks like. Looked like the handoff went to number 30. Tafari Gomillion. And yes, as they just run a counter, he's going one way, the action is the other way, but he's able to get down the first down, get to the first down before the defenders hit him. And then they group tackle him, but again, after a first down, as the, as the chains are moved, first and 10, Eastern New Mexico. Under seven minutes remaining in the first half, and the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico leading by a touchdown, threatening to make it a two-score game. First down and 10 on the 14-yard line. Wyatt Strand, very effective today, throwing the ball when needed, and the running has been great as he pitches the ball away to Smith. And Smith tries to get to the edge. And Curtis Anderson's lucky he didn't get called for a late hit there as they drug him out of bounds, but Smith picks up a few yards. Yeah, as he's working his way out to the, to the sideline, and hit right at the right at the line, but uh, no flag. And it looks like we'll have a second and five for Eastern New Mexico, right at the 10 yard line. Wolves defense now back against the wall. Again, that counter action again to Terry. And Terry gets stalled out, maybe moves the ball down to about the nine yard line. As Cummings in the middle, they're able to uh, stuff up the middle as they, they haven't had as much luck up the middle, more to the outside, but it's third and five and you have all the options you want here. You can run the option or pass the ball because Strand has had a very good first half so far. Court Hammond entered the game, defensive lineman, also part of senior day today, wearing number 91. Now under six minutes, third down and five on the nine yard line. Smith goes in motion. They'll. Pitch it out to him. He's looking for the edge. He cuts it up. Parnell had the tackle and then let him go. But there is a flag on the play for defensive offside. So either way, there was a first down on that play. As you see Smith work his way to the outside, Parnell does try to rip it away. But we do have the flag, and we'll hear from the ref shortly. Tough sledding. So Offside. Defense in the neutral zone of the snap. Half the distance to the goal. It's third down. That so did not give him a first down. So they must have been short on the run then, just, just about the same spot, but they do get a, a free down on this play. Huh. Repeat third down. Should be third and a very short one then, Michael. Almost a bad handoff there. Terry gets it. He'll pick up the first down and be about the one yard line. Mr. Terrell Cummings was able to get into the backfield and hit Strand, but he, Strand handed the ball off. And again, just a short distance they had to go. They pick up the first down. It'll be first and goal at about the three yard line for Eastern New Mexico, trying to punch it in and take a two score lead. First time all season, Michael. I know it's in the final game of the season, but this is the first team I've seen that maybe as out physical Western Oregon on both sides of the football so far. Terry gets it, leaps over, he'll get the touchdown and Eastern New Mexico now leading 20 to seven, awaiting the extra point. Yeah, very tough for sure. As you see him able to reach out, dive over the goal line and get the first down, or excuse me, touchdown. But it is, it's a Lone Star Conference team. We've seen them all season. They're very, very tough, very fast. Uh, it's, it, it's really fun. It's some different matchups in uh, the regular GNAC games, but again, you, you do see some real talent on those teams. Vargas in to kick the extra point. See if he can make it a 14-point game for the visitors. It is up and it is good. And Eastern New Mexico now leading 21-14. to 14. We'll be back for the conclusion 
of the second quarter here on KWVT Channel 17. Welcome to MacArthur Field. If you're just joining us, Eastern New Mexico on top 21 to seven, Michael behind 30 plays and 212 yards. And you thought most of it would come on the ground, but they've actually been effective in the air as well. 86 yards for Wyatt Strand. Obviously most of those yards coming on the 61 yard touchdown pass. But again, very similar to Western Oregon where you have a run, run, run game and then try to throw in a pass and they can be very big when that happens. And that was ref a <laughs> Curtis Anderson's pretty much pleading. Like, it went out of bounds before it hit the pylon. The football on. hit the out-of-bounds pylon. By rule, it's a touchback. First down, Western Oregon at the 25-yard line. Oh. I guess I, the tie I, I, goes to the runner yeah, on that I one. Guess. Yeah, I mean, I think the nose was down first. <laughs> If this was a D1 game or an NFL game, it would have been. This would have been the fifth replay of the game. But I think uh, or, uh, Western Oregon would have got the Curtis the Anderson ball. is got his helmet off and he's pleading. But you see the offense come out and you see if they can get within a score here as the game goes along. Curtis Anderson, in my opinion, the unquestioned leader of this defense. his junior campaign. It'll be great to see him next fall as well. Omari Land will get it off the left side. He's looking for a block. He cuts it up. He's got first down yardage. Looks like he gets horse collar or face mask. But he'll move the ball out to about the 43 yard line. Great pickup. Yeah, great job as he has blocking down the field and he's working his way behind Gonzalez, I believe. And just tackled down. Yes, it does look like he's ripped down by his collar. But no flag there, but a first down for Western Oregon at the 44-yard line. Western Oregon has all three of its timeouts, trailing by 14. They did win the toss and will get the opening kickoff in the second half. Land right up the middle, and Land's going to cut it to the 40, 35, gets it down to the 30. And one of the things I love about this offense, Michael, is when Land or Jackson gets going, they just keep feeding him the ball. As they should, and you see him a giant hole up the middle with some great blocking down the field from right. Another first down for Western Oregon as they hurry back to the line of scrimmage, going with a fast-paced offense today. Curry right back to Land, and Land will keep going. They're trying to strip the ball away. Penalty flag thrown in. And right in the middle of the field, there's a lot of different options what it could be, but you do see some Eastern New Mexico players pointing back to the Western Oregon side. Quick conference for the referees and just awaiting the call. During the run, personal foul, face mask, defense, that 15 yard penalty being forced half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That'll move the ball to the 16 yard line, face mask on the play, didn't see who the guilty party was, but I'd seen one earlier on this drive. Now in the red zone, Ty Curry can look at a lot of different options, and this has been a special part of the field for none, one number five in Marquis Sampson. Marquis Sampson with the speed, he can go all over the field, but this is the fun part of this Western Oregon offense. They have so many weapons, you don't know exactly who is going to go to, or they just stick with the mainstay and just run up the middle with Nico Jackson here. Nico did have a nice catch out of the backfield a couple of weeks ago, so we'll see if that happens Sending here. him in motion. Michael calling his shot, and the ball underthrown to Nico Jackson. Man, Michael is almost like he was a prophet, knew it was going to come on that play. Uh, they found something here in the last few weeks where they like to go to Nico a little bit more out of the backfield. Uh, a lot of people aren't looking for it. Looked like it could have been set up for something there, even maybe a pass from Nico Jackson down the field for, at, from that formation. But, uh, again, second and ten for Western Oregon at the 15-yard line. Leading receiver for yards on the season is Thomas Wright. Thomas Wright is at the top of your screen. Curry in the shotgun with Nico Jackson, Tyler Reed, and Jaron Ford. Curry hands it to Jackson. Jackson again straight up the middle, but there isn't much there. And it's going to be third and long for this Western Oregon offense. Heading towards the three-minute mark in the second quarter, trailing 21 to seven. 
And as we saw last week, uh, a lot of this might be four down territory as the kicking, kicking game hasn't been clicking so much this year. And they do like to go for it on four down. So you could see another run here. May not be going right at the, st at the first down marker right now. They're going to call it third and seven from the 12-yard line. Ford in motion. And they give it to Jackson. Jackson goes up, tries to cut it up himself. And again, Jackson's just one of those tough guys. And he takes it down to about, it looks like, the seven-yard line. And again, if they're in four-down territory, although you see, the, see a change here with some people coming on the field. Well, there isn't a question that the offense is staying. Curry staying out there. Yeah, yeah I'm not even that. a question. <laughs> Wholesale substitutions in the receiving core, Michael. But they're going to call it fourth and three from the seven. I was looking at the wrong section of players coming and going. There, so. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Approaching two minutes remaining in the first half. Ty Curry in the shotgun. Sampson in motion. Curry is going to throw it. Pressure up the middle. And Curry cannot get rid of the ball. And for the second time or the first time I believe today, Western Oregon will turn it over on downs. That was, that play was blown up from the get-go. Yeah, Jamari Bennett able to get to the backfield. Ty Curry looked like he had a receiver on a, on a move up the middle, but the pocket broke down very quickly. Great job by the Eastern New Mexico defensive line. Ty Curry all season when he has gone back to pass has had plenty of time. And if he doesn't, he's able to pull the ball down and run it. This time, no chance at all with a couple players in the backfield. Turnover on downs. Eastern New Mexico with the ball at the 20-yard line. One minute, 59 seconds remaining in a first half that has seen the Greyhounds get off to a great start this afternoon. Johnny Smith avoids two or three tacklers, eventually goes down, and penalty flags all over the field. And this might be a late hit as you have a player that looked like he was tripping there for a second as Johnny Smith is During working the his run, way around. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 42. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, you have Mac Little, defensive end, trying to work his way around. It was a good play, but as he lost his footing, it looks like he came down. The only thing he could grab was the face mask and a big gain for Eastern New Mexico as they try to score with two minutes left in the half. Taking a look at the sideline, I interviewed Coach Tim Rood. He's talking with Omari Land and Nico Jackson and Valadares, who will be in that lineup a year from now. But Smith will get the ball here on first down, cutting it back, and he's got blockers, Michael, and this is trouble. They take the ball all the way down to the 20. Missed assignments. And Smith able to reverse field and get a huge gain. Yeah, as all the action's going one way, he decides to stop, goes back, and again, no backside contain, and he's able to work his way down the field with blockers. Parnell having to knock him out again 40 yards down the field, but a huge pickup for Eastern New Mexico as they're inside the red zone looking to score before the half. Be a huge score and a huge change in momentum. And Wyatt Strand's going to throw. Backside pressure coming. He steps up. Again, he'll throw it out of bounds. And I'm surprised they actually didn't call him down. Or pass the line of scrimmage and throwing the ball. But uh, There is no foul for intentional grounding. The passer was out of the pocket, and the ball crossed the scrimmage. As I'm thinking out loud here, but it looked like he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball, but he was outside the pocket either way. So they decided not to call, throw a flag. Second and 10, Eastern New Mexico. Western Oregon is going to have to rely heavily on this defense to stall this drive out and see if they can keep points off the board, trailing by 14. Strand now is going to pitch it last second to Smith. Smith cuts it up. Smith will take it inside the 10-yard line. And Parnell having to decide if he's going to come up and try to take out Strand. And when he does that, that one second of hesitation is enough for him to pitch the ball out and work his way down the field for another first down. First and goal, Greyhounds. Western Oregon having to uh, make a big stop here if they want to try to keep themselves in this game in the first half. Defensive communication problems on the line. Court Hammond calling it out. They'll hand the ball to Terry. Terry cuts it back. Terry will take it down to the one-yard line. Terry scored on the previous drive to make the score 21-7. to Western Oregon not going to be using any of its timeouts, and Eastern New Mexico not having to. Not having to, just working the clock down for this first half. No reason to give Western Oregon 
the ball back with any time. If they score, or even if they turn it over, you just don't want Western Oregon to have a chance to score. Terry gets it. I'm going to assume when he comes out of the bottom, it's going to be close to a touchdown. They're going to call it a touchdown. Near side field judge will make that official, and it's 27 to 7. It looks very close on the replay, but they do call him reaching over there right at the line, of, at the goal line. And another touchdown for Eastern New Mexico with the extra point to come to go up three scores. Vargas coming on for the extra point, his fourth point after attempt this afternoon. Eastern New Mexico coming on the road and putting on a clinic leading 28 to seven. We'll keep it here, Mike. It's gonna be an interesting uh, halftime to say the least, uh, probably for this coaching staff, is I know that the big thing that this team wanted to do coming off of such a thrilling victory a week ago was to send their seniors out on a good note and a victory. But right now, they are in trouble of losing contact with the Greyhounds. Well, the Greyhounds haven't done much in the way of a sustained drive except for the first one. The rest of these have been big, giant plays, 50-yard plays, a couple of them, 40-yard plays, big penalties. So if Western Oregon could come out in the second half and just control the game again, stop with the penalties, they can get in this game for sure. But again, it's going to take a lot of work as Eastern New Mexico has looked good so far, especially with the quarterback strand. Well, here's some good news. We'll be optimists about it. 47 seconds. Curtis Anderson and Marquis Sampson will go back deep. Western Oregon's got all three of their timeouts, and they have an offense that I know I asked somebody. I haven't got the stat yet, but I know that it's well into the 30s now. 30 plays or more of over 20 yards for this offense. It's probably closer to 40 on the season. We don't have the official number, but this offense does have the ability to strike quickly, and it has also shown a couple times that there might be uh, some things up Arm Ferguson's sleeve maybe that he's going to have to pull out this afternoon with the playbook. Vargas will kick it away. Sampson at the 10-yard line. Curtis Anderson will get it. Backed up to about the two. Sampson going to look for a block. Anderson tries to get away at the 30, but he'll be tackled. Ty Curry and the offense will come out with 41 seconds and three timeouts. Curtis Anderson working his way up the field. Uh, nothing really opening for him. He did have some decent blocking just past that level, but a great tackle on special teams by Eastern New Mexico. And you'll see Western Oregon, again, 40 seconds left. They do like to uh, try to get it down the field still with 40 seconds left. We'll see what happens here. Obviously, you can't have a turnover at this point. Ty Curry has been effective all season, getting himself out of the pocket and able to run second leading rusher on the team, but it's going to rely heavily upon number 14's arm, probably here on this drive. And as I say, that Curry is gonna have to run. And Curry will get four yards. Clock will continue to roll. Yeah, Curry looking down the field, trying to see if he can find Thomas Wright open. Uh, nothing develops with him, and then he decides to just tuck the ball and run and pick up a positive gain as they're back to the line of scrimmage. Curry's going to throw again on second down. Steps up into the pocket. Has Thomas Wright open. And Thomas Wright, right at midfield, gets Very out of bounds with 13 seconds remaining. Very similar play to the one they just ran. Looking for Thomas Wright to uh, just get to the sideline, get the ball out of bounds. Right at the 50-yard line to give him a couple attempts to get Justice into field goal Murphy. range or get into the end zone. Justice Murphy. Tyler Reed, there is definitely some confusion on this offensive set. Trips wide receiver to the left. Thomas right after that reception still on the bottom of your screen. Curry looking left, looking back right. He'll go back and he does throw the interception. Nico Jackson, and I gotta tell you, Ty Curry basically telegraphed that he wanted to come back to right under thrown in an easy interception. Yeah, very similar to play a couple of weeks ago before the half where he threw it back, to the linebacker reading it perfectly, staying underneath there. With just four seconds left, it'll give them a chance to uh, throw it down to the end zone, I believe. It's gonna be a big regrouping session here at halftime, Michael Brown. But it's a team that's had games like this all season. That's the one positive. They have played close games. They've won quite a few of them. So they, they know what they have to do, but they have to cut out the mistakes for sure. 
Strand, for the first time I've seen today, is in the shotgun, which means he's looking to throw this ball downfield on a Hail Mary. He steps up. He does throw the ball up. It's up in the air. And as long as it doesn't end with a penalty, it'll be intercepted. Parnell has it. He's looking for blockers. That's how the first half ends on an interception on a Hail Mary pass. But Eastern New Mexico and the Greyhounds lead the Wolves 28 to 7. We'll step away for a break and be back with half That is the end of the first half. On KWVT, Channel 17. Welcome back. I am beside Monica Serta Ortiz. She is part of the Multicultural Student Services here at Western Oregon University. First thing, Monica, you're going to tell us what that is. So MSSP stands for the Multicultural Student Services and Programs Office, and we offer a lot of programs for students, such as the On Track Program, the Diversity Scholars Program, the Conexiones Program, uh, and also MCR, which stands for Multicultural Representatives, which is a mentoring program. And we also advise the Multicultural Student Union, which is an organization on campus to promote cultural diversity. So this program, I think, is essential probably to building the base of students here and maybe first-generation students that are coming from the state of Oregon and maybe specifically with certain backgrounds. And I know we use the term multicultural, but maybe people uh, you know, that have never been to college before. What do these programs do to enhance their college experience? So all these programs are really catered towards our mission, which is to promote um, and recruit and retain underrepresented students uh, on, of color on campus and just helping them graduate. Um, one of the programs that's really helpful, which is MCR, the mentoring program, we partner them up with an upper class mentor. And as an MCR coordinator, I help facilitate that process and I help uh, you know, like recruit the mentors and train them and then I create with my co-coordinator events to kind of get them and their mentees to meet each other and support kind of a like support each other and establish a connection because a lot of students are first generation so getting a mentor is really important for them. How long have you been affiliated with the program and I guess from that standpoint how confident are you in its growth and continued participation on behalf of yours and growing the program? Yeah. So I am a senior and I have been involved in MSSP for four years now. All of my four years I have been a part of their office. First I was a mentee and in the Conexiones program and now I'm an MCR coordinator. And so I've been a coordinator for three years now. Um, and I would say I really feel like they, it's like a support system for me. Um, anytime I've had any question or concern on campus, I know I can go to them for anything and it's kind of like a really big family and I really love it. <laughs> I guess uh, post-graduation if you're a senior what is this program and in in your participation in it going to lead to you when you leave Western Oregon? Yeah so I think MSSP really gave me like this perspective that it's really important to support underrepresented students and as a future teacher I think that that's going to be something I take with me um, and just making sure that they celebrate their you know cultures and be proud of who they are and just feel empowered in their education. Monica I want to thank you for your time today we will be back with more halftime after this on KWVT channel 17. Coming back to some live replays, or I guess you could say not live replays, but Michael, looking at the first half, we'll go ahead and have you discuss some of the things that you see, and we'll kind of cover the basics uh, of what happened in that first half, which was it's a tough one for Western Oregon. Yeah, I mean, again, you see the whole game. That's That play right there was a kind of a start of the downslide for Western Oregon. They had great defense there, but a fluke catch, and then they were able to get down the field and score eventually. It's, uh, it's how this game has gone. Western Oregon has had some movement on offense and been able to work their way down the field, but stalled drives. And Eastern New Mexico able to just work the uh, ball down the field in the second quarter gives them the 28-7 lead that they have right now. But again, you see Ty Curry going down the backfield a couple of times, which hasn't happened that much this season. And see Reed on the catch there, and that's a play that normally – uh, so far this season, they've been able to get down the field even more, but not today so far. Ty Curry 
working his way to the sideline on the touchdown play of the of the first half for Western Oregon. And again, nothing different than what they've done all season. They just haven't been able to get it to click as the whole first half has gone along. Curry with 40 yards on the ground and the touchdown. It was a 29-yard touchdown run. Michael, Omari Land, though, in the first half, able to get over 50 yards. So congratulations to Omari Land. Now over 1,000 yards on the season. Total offense, though, Michael, for Eastern New Mexico, very impressive. 36 plays for 277 yards and held the ball 17 minutes of that first half and converted in all three of their opportunities in the red zone. Yeah, converted in the red zone. Again, both teams uh, being plagued by penalties, six penalties for Eastern New Mexico, four for Western Oregon, but giving up first downs on a couple of those penalties. And uh, Western Oregon's got to do a lot to get back in this game, especially the way Eastern New Mexico's offense has been running in this first half. Taking a look at a few other things today that are pretty impressive just overall for Western Oregon on the season. Michael, 7-3 and three here on Senior Day and on Military Appreciation Day. They do have that co-championship underneath their belt. They have seniors, and they want to go out on a high note. And I know so far, I feel like it could be the tale of two halves. They can make the adjustments. But talk about seeing a team that does something that you haven't seen all season, how that affects you when you practice and you get into game time. How it affects you, for sure. Again, you see on a couple of their big plays, they, they defended it well, but it's the backside. It's when they've cut back and worked their way back across the field is when they've been able to get a couple of 50-yard plays. That's the type of thing Western Oregon has to clean up, and that's a tough thing when you're running against an option running team, a true option team, because you never know where the ball, which way the ball is going. Everybody has a job they're supposed to take care of, but if any one player doesn't do that job, it can spring open for a giant play, and we've seen that a few times today. And I'll just give you one update real quick. Uh, checking out that Simon Frazier Central Washington score at the half. It's Central Washington 35, Simon Frazier 14. So they've been able to score a couple times, Simon Frazier, but not quite get back in that game yet. Down. What we will do is we'll take a break here, not just in a moment, but when we come back, we'll break down the 12 seniors here on Senior Day and, spa and pay special attention to those 12 outgoing seniors here at Western Oregon University. But at the half, it is 28 to 7. And Eastern New Mexico and the Greyhounds on top of the Wolves. We'll be back for more halftime on KWVT Channel 17. Back here at MacArthur Field in Monmouth, Oregon, Michael Brown wanted to take some time this afternoon to commemorate, obviously, our friend Jim Rickards, who we referenced on the Military Appreciation Day, but 12 seniors are playing their final collegiate football game and their final game for Western Oregon University. Obviously, we can start at the very top with Ty Curry, an amazing senior season, Michael, playing in his 26th game, three players of the week in the GNAC conference, and really uh, has been the unquestioned and unheralded leader the past two seasons here for the Wolves. Yeah, definitely been a joy to watch him play and watch him develop over the last couple of seasons. And uh, it's been fun to watch him, especially when he tucks the ball and runs. Uh, at the beginning, I'll be honest, I, was, I wasn't always so sure that he should tuck the ball and run, but as the games have played out, he's been very good at it and has made the right choice most of the time. And it's been a lot of fun to watch him. Sure, if we had an opportunity to talk to Ty Curry, Michael, I would probably say that the highlights of this season probably were the victory against the Sousa Pacific to clinch the share of the GNAC title. But I think he will always remember going to Central Washington and be the first quarterback since 1998 to beat the Wildcats in Ellensburg. Yeah, they've traveled a lot this year, and it's been fun to watch him. His leadership has been great, being a captain all year. And uh, again, this is uh, right now. He's talking to the team right now, especially trying to get everybody on the same page for the second half. Up front, Michael, Joseph Gonzalez wears at number 66. Obviously an integral part to this offensive line that this year under Coach Rude and Coach Harris uh, have had great success running the ball uh, basically to a two and a half to one ratio against its opponents. Unfortunately, they're on the receiving end of that 
today, but uh, great uh, contributions from Joseph Gonzalez. Joseph Gonzalez, a great offensive line. We've called his name enough times because he's down the field blocking all the time, along with most of the offensive linemen. But, yeah, great job by him, and it's, uh, it's been fun to watch him as well. Also leaving Western Oregon today, number seven, Nico Jackson. Nico Jackson with a signature running style and really coming into his own again in the second half of his senior season, showing that he can be a very dangerous receiver out of the backfield. Yeah, I remember last year when uh, we first saw him, uh, reminded me a longtime Rams fan is of Steven Jackson back in the day. Uh, last, same last name, same hairstyle, but uh, a very good runner, a very, very, very solid runner. Uh, you think it's just all about his size and he's going to run people over, but then uh, you see his speed when he gets to the open field and has had a couple of catch, uh, receiving touchdowns this year, and it's been a joy to watch him play. Shout out to Mr. Jackson, Nico's father. Had a chance to catch up with him before the game. Michael, very complimentary of our work. We are also very complimentary of all the people here at KWVT that put on a great program and produce such high-quality football. Derek Parnell, I know, uh, probably kicking himself right now. Uh, for that muffed kick earlier in the game that led to their fourth score in the afternoon for the visitors, but uh, has had a really good season as well. Very effective in breaking up passes and has had moments on special teams as well. Yeah, he's been uh, yeah he's been one of the playmakers all year, especially on defense. You see him get in there causing turnovers, being in the backfield sometimes, out of uh, just outside of Portland at Southridge High School, a powerhouse out there sometimes. Uh, it's been good to watch him and fun to watch him play all season. Obviously, this name will live uh, in history, the block that changed history. Nate Proctor Jr. also playing his final home game, blocking the field goal a week ago that gave Western Oregon its share of the GNAC title. Yeah, he's definitely from a powerhouse. O o O'Day High School outside of Seattle. Uh, great job by him all season. Uh, name we've called all year. Expect to see some uh, GNAC conference uh, recognition for sure for him as he's been all over the place, uh, both on special teams and on defense. I think I would be a tough one to replace next year. Yeah, I think I recall when we went into game one, we saw Tyler Reed throw a halfback option pass, but Tyler Reed today. Newly minted and engaged, wearing number four, but uh, is really uh, he's stuck with it all season, uh, and, a, and a very tough, hard-nosed player on the offensive side of the ball. Tyler Reed, yeah, that's pretty neat. The uh, pregame ceremony for the seniors, and he took it over for himself. As the Wolves are making their way back to the field this halftime, some other players to get some mention on that offensive line: Aaron Turner playing in his 37th game. And he, uh, he's definitely been a big part of the success up front with Gonzalez on this great running attack for Western Oregon's offense this season. Another offensive lineman that we'll mention often because he's down the field making blocks. And another one that's going to be uh, tough to replace next season as he's been a leader playing so many games for Western Oregon. One of my favorite players will be leaving Joey Ruse. I just like saying his name. <laughs> I like seeing him fly across the field and making tackles. He's out there making plays all the time. Yeah, another one that's going to be very difficult to replace. But I've enjoyed watching him play for sure this year, even though I've got his name wrong a few times. And I apologize if you, when you do get a chance to watch all these again. <laughs> Court Hammond on the defensive line wearing number 91. Michael, he has really been a menace, uh, really been an anchor on that defensive line, getting deep penetration and coming up with several tackles for loss this season. For sure. Uh, always in the backfield, always making plays. Getting this first half, the defensive ends, uh, just on this game note, the defensive ends have a, a very difficult job of keeping containment on both sides, and you hope that uh, he can continue doing what he's been doing all season in the second half. Tyrell Cummings as well on the defensive line has had a nice career here, and his career at Western Oregon will end. His contribution has been felt throughout the season, but Braylon Evans, Talking about him coming from Montana State, one of the players out there every time, Michael, I see him just looks like a football player. Yeah, I was telling you last week, uh, he's one of my favorite players of this season. Just as a player that when you see him, he's consistent. He's been a lockdown corner all season and has made great plays as the season's gone along. And uh, it was fun to see him play this year. Anthony, Anthony Kinnison will be playing his 13th game this Saturday after transferring his junior season. Also had a couple of tackles last week in that clinching victory over Azusa Pacific. Anthony Kinnison tweeted this morning how much he's going to miss playing with his brothers after today. And I'm sure him and the rest of them are uh, 
trying to get on the uh, same page in the second half to get the game going and try to get back in this game and get a victory for their last home game. I don't know how to read body language, Michael, but Western Oregon seemed to get out here pretty early to start this second half, and I am sure there is going to be a sense of urgency when they start this second half. We shall see. The game will tell us very shortly. But again, all season long, they played close games. They haven't really been down this much to have to work their way back in, so we'll have to see if that works out. But again, the offense can do it. Uh, it's just whether or not Eastern New Mexico will let them. Stepping away for our final break, we'll be back for the rest of halftime and the start of the second half here on KWVT Channel 17. Well, Michael Brown, this is going to be our last half of football, and it was a tough first half to watch. 28-7, to and kind of Western Oregon in many ways just beat themselves, but I'll give all the credit right now. The Greyhounds played well. Yeah, Strand, for the quarterback for Eastern New Mexico, had a fantastic first half, and you hope to see that Western Oregon can change that up or will be a rough second half. Uh, you know, it's not the way they wanted to finish out the season, but, uh, again, if a team can do it, we've seen them score all season long, they can come back and win this game. Western Oregon will get that opening kickoff, and obviously they've been looking to kind of get and unlock the keys to the offense today. We were talking in halftime, Amari Land, uh, personally getting over a thousand yards that's that's quite an accomplishment yeah needed 51 coming into today was able to get 55 in this first half uh they're going to need a lot of amari land and nico jackson and ty curry for sure to get back in this game looks like the action's about ready to start on the field once again it will be eastern new mexico and vargas kicking off to either marquis sampson or curtis anderson it would be nice to see western oregon get some great field position as we'll head down to the field here for the start of the second half and the final two quarters of Western Oregon football on KWVT, channel 17. It's been a pleasure. 15 minutes on the clock. Vargas kicks it away. It's a short kick. Anderson will come underneath it. He's at the 10-yard line at the 20, 25, 30. Hits the edge. Now at the 40. And a nice start there for the junior defensive back. Curtis Anderson will give Western Oregon its first possession of the second half. And senior quarterback Ty Curry, reigning player of the week in the GNAC Conference, has got his work cut out for him. Definitely has his work cut out for him. We'll see if this offensive line can get back together and uh, stop the penetration of the defense. 30 minutes of football to see if they can get back in this game. Trailing why 21, 28 to 7. Curry now, first play from offense on the second half. Amari Land doesn't get it, and Curry is in trouble. Curry gets sacked. He'll lose five yards on first down. Coming out with a play-action look, hoping to get a big hitter off the first play of the second half, but great penetration by the defensive line, able to get in the backfield, take Curry down, and the good field position that they had set back five yards right now. It'll be second and 15 for Western Oregon. Land averaged nine yards a carry in the first half, only touching it six times. He does get it here on second down. He'll take it back maybe three yards. Three yards trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Curry and this offense, Michael, already in a tough moment. Don't want to have a quick three and out. Ball on the 38-yard line, and the ball needs to get to midfield for a first down. Curry in the shotgun. Taking his time, he'll change the play. Trey Shima Bakura, quarterback's coach, signaling the play to number 14, Ty Curry. Curry now looking underneath, finds Reed. Reed makes one man miss, 50. Gonna try to make another man miss, looking for a block, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Wolves! No! Is it? It's got to be a touchdown, Michael. It looks like they're calling him down at the two-yard line. You see him as he's working his way down the field. He has some great blocking, I believe. Murphy down the field blocking. As he tries to get that final block, just pushed out at the one. 
You, you see him dive for the pylon, yeah. but they called him out at the two-yard line, it looks Foot like. Foot out of bounds, ball over the pylon. But a Sorry. great play for Western Oregon to get back in this game, to get down. Now they just have to punch it in. 60-yard completion to Reed. Land in the backfield. They'll toss it to him seven yards deep, and he's untouched, and the Wolves strike quick. 12.55 on the clock, and touchdown for Amari Land. Yeah, great pitch play right up the middle, and he decides to cut back. Good blocking in front. He reaches out. Touchdown, Western Oregon. Extra points to come to get within two touchdowns of Eastern New Mexico. That's what you call a good response to a bad first half. Most definitely. Most definitely. Gross is on for the extra point. Try to cut the lead down to, or cut the deficit down to 14. Gross's kick is up and it is good, and the Wolves now trailing 28 to 14. More third quarter action coming up next on KWVT Channel 17. Senior day has a senior highlight. Tyler Reed with a 60 yard reception, taking the ball down to the two yard line, and Omari Land punching it in. Michael, great start to the second half. Great start to the second half. Now you have Johnny Smith and Paul Terry White Strand coming back out from the Eastern New Mexico, New Mexico offense <laughs> and uh, trying to see if they can continue what they were doing in the first half, really controlling the game with their offense. But Western Oregon's defense has made adjustments at the half. We'll see if they can uh, stand up to them. It's going to be a great opportunity for a team win today. Gross kicking it away. Deep kick gets down about the three-yard line, and the Greyhounds looking to get going, but nothing there. Late flag coming in. That was a 30-yard toss of that flag right there. As you see, the replay gets a pass a 22-yard line, but a great, great tackle there. By the Western Oregon special teams, Ian Russell. Waiting to hear what the flag is for. During the run, personal foul, blindside bomb block, receiving team number 56, half the distance to the goal, first down, Eastern New Mexico. Eastern New Mexico with a big penalty to start their second half. Yeah, that's one of the scarier plays, the blindside block, just because you don't know, uh, you don't see somebody coming, you can get really hurt on that play. That's why they tried to eliminate it. Backing up Eastern New Mexico to start their drive. 11 yard line for Wyatt Strand. And again, interesting set of circumstances. We said last week, strange game. And right now, just in a course of a couple of minutes, it feels like it could be a tale of two halves, but we'll wait to see what Western Oregon's defense does here on this opening possession for the Greyhounds. Yeah, Eastern New Mexico just pounding the ball right up the middle again with Paul Terry picking up a couple of short gains on these plays to set up a decent attempt on third down, third and five it looks like. They'll take the ball out to the 17 yard line, taking a look at the far side. It looks around the 21 and a half or 22 yard line. The offense will need to get. Defense almost jumped off sides on that play. Hard count maybe coming from Strand. Little pitch there, and they'll hit the corner, but Michael, stingy defense. Great job, I believe, I believe, by Sinclair coming up to give some support. Taking him out at the sideline right before the first down. Great job by Western Oregon's defense. And then the special teams units for both teams coming out. Looks like Western Oregon will get the ball back. I always get the 16 to 18 confused. I'm not sure if that was Joey Ruse or Sinclair there. So, yeah. Derek Parnell, maybe a chance to make up for that turnover in the first half. Clean snap, kick is away. Decent kick. Parnell, though, decides to run away from it and a favorable bounce for the Greyhounds. As Western Oregon will get the ball their own 31 yard line. But a nice three and out from the Western Oregon defense, Michael. And Ty Curry comes back out. Maybe with a little bit more confidence in what the offense might be able to do here in the second half. 
Yeah, just uh, four minutes into this third quarter, a lot of time left in this game, and a great job by Western Oregon trying to inch, claw their way back into the game. Just have to see if Ty Curry and the offense can continue the, the momentum right now. Very much a signature of the Western Oregon offense throughout the season has been the ability to have dynamic chunk plays get down the field as witnessed on that opening drive and the 60-yard completion to senior Tyler Reed. Nico Jackson now in the backfield. Ford in motion. Curry's going to throw. He's got a man over the middle. He's got Ford. Ford catches it at the 40-yard line. And this looks like a totally different team to start the second half. Yeah, it's like they were setting them up in the first half, and now they're deciding to cash in all their uh, their plays Time here. on the field for injury. And there is an injured Eastern New Mexico player back at the previous line of scrimmage, but he's getting himself up. But a great job. You see down the field, a nice catch with a defender on his back, but we will have a Jamar pausing the action here. Yes, as Jamar, play yeah, injured Jamar on the field. Claiborne limping off the field. But yeah, exactly what you'd want. Ty Curry and the team coming out, getting the ball down the field, and you see this is what they want to do in the first half and weren't able to. Now they just have to see if they can pay it off with a score 40 yards away from it. Got to give credit to Jaron Ford. Just about any time he touches the football, he's able to get a lot of yards and do a lot of damage. On the 39-yard line of the Greyhounds, Western Oregon is already on the march and in Greyhound territory, trailing by two touchdowns, but just four minutes into the second half, Wolves are threatening again. 20 on the play clock. Curry taking his signals from the sideline. Curry fakes it to Jackson. Curry now out of the pocket, in trouble. Throws it away wisely in the direction of Thomas Wright. And again, heady play from Curry, not trying to force anything. Yeah, Curry, it's a quick read on this play. I think it's meant to be a very quick pass. They recovered well. He tries to give himself a little bit more time, see if somebody can break open, gets to the outside, throws the ball away. No harm, no foul. Second and 10 for Western Oregon. Eastern New Mexico trying to get their, their mojo back from the first half and see if they can come up with a, with a stop or a turnover. Jackson gets the handoff, but he's in trouble. Maybe just past the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long for Western. As a defensive line for Eastern New Mexico has had a really good day today, making a play at the line of scrimmage, holding Nico Jackson to a short game. Back to the line of scrimmage very quick, third and 10, Western Oregon. Curry has Sampson, Reed, and Ford out to his right. Play looks set, third down and nine on the 38-yard line. Curry in the gun, steps up in the pocket, throws the ball, overthrown, was going for Reed. But it does have a late hit, it looks like, on the quarterback there, Ty Curry being hit after the play was over. We'll see if it was that or a hold. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 48 for a late hit, taking the quarterback to the ground. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Looks like Tony Bethsold, who's been in the backfield quite a few times today, but this time a little after the play. Great lucky break for Western Oregon as they get a first down right about the 24-yard line. Several times today, Michael, you kind of talked about how evenly matched these teams were and that there would come a point where you thought the Greyhounds would eventually make some mistakes. Trey Shuma Bakura calls timeout. a timeout, and we'll West call a timeout Oregon. too here Their on KWVT timeout. Channel 17. <laughs> Roughing the passer penalty moves the ball to the 24 yard line, and Western Oregon trying to get right back into this football game on its second drive here to start the second half. Jackson, no. Curry, though, over the top, looking for Evander Willingham, and man, that was a well-designed play. 
Very well designed play as they're running the play action pass, trying to get him in the corner of the end zone. Ball just a little bit overthrown with the safety trying to come in to help. It'll be a second and 10 for Western Oregon. He's trying to get Ty Curry a, another touchdown here for his final game for Western Oregon. 19 touchdown throws on the season, I believe. Very, very effective through the air. Another rushing touchdown already today. 11 on the season for number 14. Curry sends Ford in motion. Jackson, really, the sledding's been tough for him today. The, the initial push from the defensive line, they're getting good contact on number seven. Yeah, trying to make a move at the line to see if he can give, some, give himself a, a chance. But a great job, again, defensive line for Eastern New Mexico playing pretty stout today. Getting a stop right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 11 for Western Oregon. Still a chance to pick up a first down, though. Rightfully, got to think, Michael, again, some of the, the kicking, I'll say issues. I don't know how much range Gross really has, so we would assume this is four-down territory for this Western Oregon team right now. Jackson stays in the backfield on third and 11. And Jackson is open, but he's missed. Now he's going to go after it again. And a great athletic throw. Jackson almost came up with what have been one of the better plays you've ever seen in a football game. Yes, yeah, Ty Curry has Jackson on the wheel route pretty much from the beginning of the play. It looks like it's covered pretty well, but he gets a chance to throw it to that spot right at the pylon. But a good defensive play knocks the ball away. It'll be fourth down here for Western Oregon as it looks like they're going to go for it. Time Eastern out. New Mexico. Eastern New Mexico, their first time out of the half. Eastern New Mexico not liking what they saw on the field as Western Oregon was going with a, a very quick huddle there. Of no huddle at all, actually. Yeah, it was basically, you saw the personnel. There were multiple players running off and on the field, so he did not have anything that was going to look very good. Obviously, some extra time for the coaching staff to talk about this very important fourth down and 11 on the 25-yard line. A score would go a long way here, Michael, but so far, the second half, far more productive, it looks like, than the first half for Western Oregon. Oh, 100%. Uh, it's a different game completely, and you hope they can score here, or at least get a first down and keep this drive going to completely get back in this game. But right now, they do have all the momentum. This is a huge play here on fourth down. Something, obviously, the Greyhound defense had to key in, Michael, and we, I know that he has the 29-yard touchdown score, but Ty Curry has literally been taken off the field as a runner so far this afternoon. Yeah, the, the defensive line for... Eastern New Mexico has controlled the line of scrimmage a lot of this game, and Ty Curry hasn't been able to get to the outside because if at any point in time he doesn't throw the ball away, he has been taken down his first sacks. Curry now going to try to take advantage of Looks this. Looks like a lot of pressure coming from Eastern New Mexico. Curry's going to have to get rid of it quick. Does underneath. It's underthrown. Sampson was open, and Curry just could not get his foot planted enough to get a clean throw as Samson was open around the 10-yard line. Eastern New Mexico sending extra pressure off the edge. Yeah, Ty Curry was not able to step up into the pocket to get that pass because Samson did do a great job of getting open. But a turnover on downs for Western Oregon. Eastern New Mexico getting the ball back and trying to see if they can find their, uh, their game they had in the first half where they were dominating this game. It's on, it's on. Wyatt Strand... Again, weren't really fearing his arm. But he's going to throw on first down, and he's got a man. Braylon Evans breaks it up. Ball was underthrown. Zachary Fields already has a long touchdown score and was begging for the penalty on that play. Yeah, man-to-man -man coverage out there, but it looked like a good job by Braylon just putting his hand in there and he has as much of a right to the ball as the receiver does, as I like to say sometimes, and he played it pretty clean there. Second and 10 for Eastern New Mexico. Sinclair and Anderson now acting almost like they're putting four linebackers, not playing deep at all, and looking for a run here on second down from the 25. And Sinclair, late pitch to Smith. And Haig is able to get it stopped for a short gain. But I'll tell you something, they almost dared them to run the ball that time. Yeah, it looked uh, scary with that pitch being just a little bit behind. But uh, good job by Haig there coming up for support. 
and stopping him just after a short gain. Looks like it'll be third and nine for Eastern New Mexico. The Greyhounds. Wearing their evergreen and white uniforms. <laughs> third and eight on the 27. Just under eight minutes remaining in the third quarter on senior day. And he's gonna pass again. Wyatt in trouble. He'll step up in the pocket. He's looking for first down running room. And he makes a few players miss, Michael. And that's all on him. And that is, that's a great individual play. And a very close spot there. It looks like uh, it's enough for the first down there. But you see again, it's the same thing with this. Plenty of time, backside pressure. But that backside pressure is the, also the contain. See Parnell try to come up and make a tackle. But down the field, able to pick up a first down. A great job by Strand on that play as Eastern New Mexico able to continue their drive. Greyhounds pushing out towards the 35-yard line on a great individual play by Wyatt Strand. Strand, obviously, one of the four people we mentioned that could run the ball today, and that his biggest run on the afternoon so far. He's going to hold on to it again, and he put himself in harm's way there, but he's able to avoid getting hit too directly. Yeah, it's one of those things, uh, the defensive line are hoping he's going to try to cut back one of these times and get a good shot on him. But Strand's been really tough today, working his way down and picks up a good gain of four yards on that first down play. Second down and seven. Ball placed on the 38-yard line. And I see Curtis Anderson again getting closer and closer to that defensive line. And just as you said, Michael, Parnell can't quite make it. Their speed on the outside is something that I haven't seen Western Oregon have to deal with. And they're struggling today, basically, to, base, to stay home at times. Yeah, very Western Oregon-ish, where they're able to just to get out and use that speed. But uh, trying to get to the outside, Parnell is able to push him out, though. Number nine, Parnell, uh, setting up a third and four here for Eastern New Mexico. Six minutes left in this quarter. Haig at number 44 with his hands on his <laughs> on his side. He has definitely got a motor and has been very active today in tackles. Lovelace now. Handoff right up the middle. Looks like it goes to Terry. And Terry's able to get first down yardage on the play. Yeah, as they're trying to get pressure up the middle, sending one of the linebackers. Fortunately, the tackle is missed in the backfield. And a first down again for Eastern New Mexico as they have a nice drive we're working right now here in the third quarter. Offensively, this team today dominating team or time of possession and doing it again here to start the third quarter. And it's a quarterback keeper that's designed 50. Wyatt Strand turns it up, hits the 30, and he'll be drugged down at the 25-yard line. But they found a wrinkle that they like with him this afternoon. Yeah, as you see, they're just working it, working it, working it. And now, as they loosen up that defensive line, they're able to get some more holes and work their way down the field. It's important for Western Oregon to get a stop here as they were climbing their way back in the game. You don't want to go down by three scores again. Wyatt Strand on the afternoon quietly playing himself into consideration. We don't talk about the player of the game, but right now, Wyatt Strand playing great football. He'll pitch it out to Smith. Smith finally drugged down by Anderson and a tackle for a loss. A yeah, great job by Curtis Anderson to come up with some support. Able to get a hit in the backfield and the rest of the team takes them down together as they just run the pitch out there and Smith trying to figure out if he can get anywhere, but he doesn't. Holds on to the ball though as Curtis Anderson was trying to rip the ball away. Second and 11 for Eastern New Mexico the Western Oregon 26-yard line. Curtis Anderson usually much deeper in the defensive backfield, like I said. Now coming up, same with Joey Sinclair. You see Braylon Evans now coming closer as well. Again, daring them to run the ball. But here we go again. Wyatt Strand steps up. And he's got room to run. But a good tackle in the open field. Yeah, just a very short gain of one yard. A good job by the defense as Strand hasn't been finding his receivers open and not wanting to throw the ball down the field. 
trying to just work his way up the field for as many yards as he can, but it's third and 10 now for Eastern New Mexico to convert. Vargas on the season, if he does have to kick a field goal, he's 13 of 17, his long on the season, 47. But we gotta get through third down and 10 first, and Wyatt Strand operating a very efficient offense today. Looking to continue the drive, but. Timeout, Eastern New Mexico. Their second time out of the half. Greyhounds take a timeout. We'll step away for a quick break here on KWVT Channel 17. <laughs> Critical third down and 10 for the Greyhounds. Still leading by two scores, 28 to 14. Eastern New Mexico takes a timeout on the 25 yard line. Wyatt Strand will go into the shotgun. And it seems to be a down you would expect him to throw. Again, Western Oregon and the Wolves showing pressure. Ball thrown underneath and a great designed play. Unbelievable, Michael. I mean, what a timeout. Zachary Fields coming up big. Zachary Fields, the money man today, catching the ball. Just a quick run right down the first down marker. Turns around, the ball is there. Linebacker trying to block the way, ball away, but just misses it. And a first down for Eastern New Mexico. Inside the red zone, trying to see if they can score. Go up by three scores again. So far on the afternoon, each time inside the red zone, Greyhounds, a perfect three for three. Terry gets it. Terry bounces outside. Parnell force the tailback out of bounds. Terry just doing what Terry's been doing all day, just working it up the middle, working it up the middle, and he's able to pick up five yards on that play. It looks like it'll be second and six for Eastern New Mexico. Western Oregon's defense trying to see if they can get control, get the ball back. So we have a little lull in the game right now. Wolves are, again, back against the wall. And time will become a factor if the Greyhounds score. That lull in the game, I think, kind of uh, caused that to happen. It looks like it'll, looks like it'll be a false start. Prior snap, false start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty. It's second down. Again, you can tell just how long and tired this defense is, is everybody's got their hands basically on their hips, as they have really, they've really had it taken to them in regards to time of possession and how physical a game this has been. Terry stumbles forward for about four yards. Terry again, just up the middle, up the middle. They, uh, looks like the defense kind of saw that one coming as they had some people blitzing that way, but you think, uh, Third and 11 here. They've been willing to pass it on third down all day today, looking for fields down the way. See if Western Oregon's defense can come up with a stop. Been asking for it, uh, hasn't happened yet on this drive for sure. Ian Russell stepping into the game for Tyler Wharf. Late pitch again, there's Smith. Smith looking for the corner. Sinclair knocking the running back out of bounds. A great job by Parnell and Sinclair there to, to come up once they saw that pitch to try to make sure he doesn't get to that first down marker. Don't see any. Now we do see a change. The, uh, the special teams unit looks like they're coming out to try to attempt a field goal and get this to a three-score game for Eastern New Mexico with a minute left in the first quarter. Vargas will come out to kick. Mentioned earlier, 13 of 17 on the season. About a 24-yard field goal attempt for Eastern New Mexico. And Western Oregon may have done something here that could be very costly if that penalty is on them. And I see the offense for the Greyhounds. Offside, defense number 32 with contact. Half the distance to the goal, that penalty results in a first down. And unfortunate for Proctor on that play to jump across the line. It'll give Eastern New Mexico a first and goal from the four yard line. 
And obviously this is a very important, very important stop here to see if they can hold him to a field goal. They don't want to be down 21 points going into the fourth quarter. Terry goes off the right side. Takes it down to about the one yard line. And they may not even hike the ball. And a great job of team tackling. Parnell able to come up there, make catch him right around the ankles there. And see, he's pretty upset he doesn't get into the end zone. But they're back to the line of scrimmage very quickly. 15 seconds left. See if they snap another play. Terry gets it, and Terry will fall into the end zone. Ball breaking the plane. Touchdown, Eastern New Mexico with five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Western Oregon not in a position to be trading touchdowns. Trailing by 20. With an extra point to come. Yeah, it's been tough with that ground game right up the middle with Terry. Just pounding and pounding. He's not making any really long plays, but they're, uh, they're important plays as the game's gone along. Vargas' kick goes to the uprights. Eastern New Mexico back out in front by 21. Michael, fi five seconds remaining in the third quarter. And you know, again, this Western Oregon offense has the ability to strike big and often, Michael, but this is a pretty big hole that's been dug. A very big hole. 21 points is going to be very difficult to overcome in the one, just one quarter. Again, you'll say with Western Oregon, if they don't have any mistakes, if they can play a clean quarter, they have a shot at it, but it's important that there's no more penalties and definitely no turnovers for the rest of the game. Yeah, effectively, I think they've taken themselves out of position multiple times today through the penalties. And one other thing, obviously, is to stop Eastern New Mexico, which has been very difficult. I have to give Eastern New Mexico plenty of credit between Terry and Wyatt Strand, at a quarterback, they've been able to just control the game, especially in the second half. Second half yeah, of the third quarter, yeah, for sure. Understood. <laughs> 48 rushing attempts for the Greyhounds, Michael. 263 yards. What is this? Nebraska Cornhuskers? Tom Osborne style of football, but it is that old school style of football, and it's, uh, it's working really well today. You don't see it very often anymore, for sure. You know, everything's a lot more spread offense, a lot more passing involved. But uh, they're going old school with what they have, and it's working today. Smash mouth football from the Lone Star Conference. And the Greyhounds right now in control, 35-14. to 14. Curtis Anderson at his own five-yard line underneath it. Samson out, lead blocking. Anderson hits the edge, hits the 30, hits the 40. And he's taken down right around the 49-yard line. And there's no quit in number three. We'll step away. It'll be the fourth quarter coming up next on KWVT, Channel 17. That is the end of the third quarter. Curtis Anderson on the run back at the end of the third quarter. We'll give Western Oregon midfield to start this fourth quarter. And it's going to be a very, very interesting fourth quarter. Seniors for Western Oregon playing their final game here at MacArthur Field and wearing the Western Oregon uniform. Land gets it on first down and he'll be tackled about the 48 yard line, but the Wolves will move in to Greyhound territory. And that's what they have to do at this point. Just keep working it, working it. Back to the line of scrimmage, no huddle. Look to the sideline, figure out the play. No, they're going right at it. Curry is going to throw. Was looking for Justice Murphy. Just hung a little too much air underneath that. Yeah, quick play. They saw something he liked with man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, but can't make a connection there. Second, excuse me, third and eight yards for Western Oregon to pick up a first down. And I would imagine at this point it's all four down territory. I can't, yeah, scores. I can't imagine it either, Michael. Obviously, the next two plays, very critical to any potential comeback. Curry now steps up, gets it to Sampson. Sampson will fall right around the 27. Too bad he couldn't keep his footing there, Michael. Too bad he couldn't keep his footing, but a great job getting open over the middle and Ty Curry finding him a first down. As you see him just trip up the ball just a little bit behind him. 
but uh, still a first down for Western Oregon. They're right back to the line of scrimmage. Curry with a great pickup now rolling out. He's going to try to run himself. 14, calling his own number, cuts it up. He'll get down, and he might take this all the way for a first down. And again, the leadership of Ty Curry on full display here in a full panic mode, trailing by 21. The senior captain on senior day trying to will his team back into this game as they run just a straight keeper for him. He works his way down, the offensive line pushing him for the first down. And this drive will continue inside the 20-yard line with a first down. Curry with back-to-back -back first downs. One on a completion to Sampson and one on his own foot. Curry now throwing a fade pattern out to Thomas Wright. Again, the thing I always want to see, Michael, is Wright being put in a position to take advantage of his height. And you give him in a position right there. He's man-to-man. -man. Ty Curry just needs to get a little bit better throw on that one. He's trying to put it right at the sideline where only his man can catch the ball. Just a little over the top on that one. It'll be second in town for Western or second and ten for Western Oregon. Wright stays in the game. Justice Murphy will head up to the top of your screen. Marquis Sampson, Nico Jackson, Evander Willingham. Almost scored a touchdown earlier in this game. And it's an area in the field I would love to be able to see Western Oregon take advantage of. Curry now spreading everybody out. Hands it off to Jackson. Jackson in trouble in the backfield. And he really had nowhere to go, Michael, and had to run out of bounds. Yeah, very lucky on that play, but he's able to make a man miss and work his way back to the line of scrimmage. As Vicente Walker in the backfield, not able to make the tackle, though, but enough to mess up the play there for Western Oregon. And it'll be third and 14, 13, excuse me, for Western Oregon. Again, first we'll, down. we'll say the same thing here again, Michael. I, I don't assume to see Gross come out and kick a field goal here. So there's going to be two plays to try to pick up this 13 yards. Like to get it on this play. Pressure again being shown by that front line. Curry now drops back, throws into the end zone. And again, the pass intended for Willingham. And Willingham looked like he was breaking open over the, over the middle. But there was some pressure on Ty Curry. He's not able to step up into this play, stepping off of his back foot, trying to get it over the defender, but a great job by the defender there to knock the ball away. Colby Russ, a great play there on third down to knock the ball away because that would have been a touchdown for Evander Willingham. Willingham will come off for this fourth down play. Critical. On the 19-yard line, the Wolves need to get down to the six-yard line. Two on the play clock, one, and he does not get it off, or they are going to call the timeout. Timeout. Western Oregon, their second timeout of the half. That's a tough one, Michael. You know that in a game with this, if they are able to pick up the first down, having to burn that timeout could be costly come later in the fourth quarter. Most definitely. It's... Uh, Ob obvious, not the best clock management there, but uh, they don't lose that five yards. The five yards would have been worse at this point, putting them at a third and eight, or excuse me, a fourth and 18. It's just fourth and 13 now, just. But uh, yeah, both teams oddly have used two timeouts. We're at the beginning of the fourth quarter and only one timeout for each team as we go down the stretch. If this game does get a little bit closer, it will be a factor. Well, this afternoon, Ty Curry has had good moments, and he's had some moments I think you'd like to take back, but right now an opportunity for the senior wearing number 14 in his 26th game at Western Oregon. In a critical situation, he'll have a four wide receiver set. Samson Wright, Murphy, and Reed. And Curry now going out and looking for Thomas Wright, who oh dives for it. And they're calling that an incomplete pass. And here we are with the replay, Michael. As you see, he has time to get the ball down the field. He's pushed out of bounds, it looks like, but he's able to get back in. He dives for it. And you see the ball just move. Pass and interference. Work its way Defense, out. Defense, yeah. number 27. That's that push out of bounds. The spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Concentrating on seeing if he can catch the ball. You don't see the, we didn't see the flag come out, but you see as he's getting down there towards the four yard line, he's pushed out of bounds. And that is a first down for Western Oregon. 
Still down by three scores, but they still have life. Sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> right now, I'll take the luck. First down and six on the six-yard line. 12.57 remaining. Western Oregon trailing by 21. Would be a great start to this fourth quarter if they could get on the board. But very similar again to the start of the third quarter. Again, working their way back in the game, though. Trying. Curry in the shotgun. Sends Murphy. Gives it to Jackson. Jackson trying to run that ball up the middle. He'll get it inside the five-yard line, but not much there. Inside the five-yard line with Nico. This season he's been able to uh, run people over and work his way up there. But again, Eastern New Mexico this whole entire day has played some solid defense. And they've been able to be in the right spots at the right time. Set up a second and goal from the five-yard line here for Western Oregon. Maybe a chance for Ty Curry to add his 12th rushing touchdown of the season, but pressure being shown right up the middle. But Curry goes in right behind Jackson. He gets stood up, and he'll be tackled around the one. Curry using Nico Jackson as a lead blocker on that play after it's totally set up, and it looks like he's gonna be able to get in the end zone, but again, Eastern New Mexico there again, stopping him right at the three yard line, excuse me, two yard line, Big couple of downs here for Western Oregon to try to get back in this game. And for the first time, maybe a ray of light, a ray of hope as the sun comes out. And hopefully the sun not setting on Western Oregon season. Curry now underneath center. Jackson in the backfield. They'll toss it to Jackson. Jackson up the middle. He'll turn. He'll switch. Touchdown, Wolves! 11.41 on the clock. And Western Oregon now trying to make it a two-score game with an extra point. Very similar to the play with Amari Land in the first half that he scored on. Just pitching it and letting him run up the middle, use his speed and power. He reaches over. Great job by Nico Jackson. Another senior scoring on senior day as they try to get back in this game with 11 minutes and 41 seconds left on the clock. Congratulations, Nico Jackson. Scoring a touchdown on senior day. Now Andrew Gross coming on for a important Point after attempt. Good snap. Gross's kick is it up, and it is good, and the Wolves trail by 14. 11.41 remaining in the fourth quarter here on KWVT, Channel 17. Football fans, don't go anywhere. I can tell you the Western Oregon sideline, their entire coaching staff right now, has got their players full attention. Andrew Gross will be kicking it away, but Western Oregon getting within two scores again for the second time here in the second half, Michael. And their defense is going to have to come up with some tough, tough plays and have got to stop this vaunted running attack of the Greyhounds right now that has dominated this defense today. Yeah, Terry, again, they're going to keep pounding the ball with Terry up the middle, but Western Oregon has had some answers in the second half as they come up with the... A... Interesting. Whoa. As you see, a couple of Western Oregon players <laughs> collide with each other as they're just trying not to get a late hit there. But again, it's uh, Terry pounding it away, pounding it away. Johnny Smith working the edges, working the sideline with his speed. And Wyatt Strand, the quarterback, is able to control the game this whole entire time. Western Oregon, especially with these defensive players that are seniors trying to make a stop here, and hopefully get a three and out and get back in this game. Wyatt Strand's only thrown the ball three times, I mean six times today, Mike, three completions for 97 yards. This has really been done old school. Penalty flag on the play and definitely in the vicinity of a holding. That holding zone, when you see the flag there, we'll see what it is though. See some players barking back and forth with each other there in the middle of the field. See that slow back up by the Eastern New Mexico team. It's probably going to be a hold on the offense. Omari land on the sideline. Trippy offense number 66. Oops. 15 yard penalty. It's first down. Loftus Fox on the tripping call there. While they have, we've only called the offensive line for Eastern New Mexico on these holds today, they have played a very good game across the board, but those penalties are hurting them in the second half, allowing Western Oregon to stay in the game. 
That'll make it a first and 25. That is a 15-yard penalty. And again, the breaks you need if you're going to try to stage a miraculous comeback. Wyatt Strand now underneath center. Bunch formation. They'll send out Smith. They give it to Terry. And Terry, no room to run. Just trying to get it up the middle there, but uh, the defense doing a fantastic job for Western Oregon. Looks like Ian Russell again out there being able to come up some support from his linebacker position and get a tackle. Three yards. It'll bring up second and 22 on the 21 yard line. Approaching 10.45 left. Getting back close to the original line of scrimmage. Really solid day for Paul Terry. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna do a rollout with Wyatt and he does the Statue of Liberty style draw play to pick up a good chance of setting up a third, it looks like a third and 11, a more manageable third down attempt here for Eastern New Mexico. Western Oregon's defense has to come up huge here in order to get back in this game. Johnny Smith, the basically the speed, Michael. 10 rushes for 114 yards. Paul Terry now, 27 carries and approaching 100 yards himself. Where uh, Western Oregon has two running backs that are Thunder and Lightning that are similar. These are definitely Thunder and Lightning here for East So East Strand wants to, oh, he's sacked. What a great effort. Michael, number 49, and I'm sorry I don't have it, James Tolliver just leaping over the top to cr create this pressure, I think. James Tolliver jumping in the backfield and startled Wyatt, allowed Nate Proctor to come up and give some support and get a sack in the backfield. A quarterback sandwich for the Western Oregon defense and the special teams come out. Tyler Reed is going to go back deep. He'll be at his own 35-yard line. First time we've seen Reed back deep today. Having a wonderful afternoon on his senior day. Again, getting engaged and has multiple receptions for first downs today. Decent kick. Reed waiting for it. He gets it. Gets away from one. Hits the 40. Hits the 50, waiting for a block, coming up from behind, but a very shifty and nifty play from number four, Tyler Reed. Great job by Tyler Reed, working his way down the field, letting his block set up in front of him. And again, the momentum for Western Oregon seems to be getting ramped up right now as they're getting themselves back into this game. The beautiful thing about it is, Michael, with nine minutes and 12 seconds, I know they only have the one timeout, they still can run their basic offense and say, we'll run the ball. Obviously, they don't want to. Oh, with nine minutes left, again, the timeouts are going to make a difference right now. They have to score on this drive really to, to really feel good about getting back in this game. But uh, there's plenty of time left with nine minutes left in this game. Curry now in the shotgun. Omari Land goes in motion. Now Curry going up the middle. He'll keep it, trying to wrap it up. Curry switching and twirling around, picking up eight yards on first down. Ty Curry, it looks like it's either a pass out to Omari Land in the flat, but it, he decides to pull it down right away and uses his agility and speed, as always, to pick up a good chunk of yards, eight yards on that first down play. Be second and two from the 41-yard line. Land gets it. Nope. Fake. And Curry, again, looks like an underthrown ball, but did they say that Reed able to get it? Great hands from Tyler Reed. Just like for Eastern New Mexico earlier with an underthrown pass that only the receiver had a chance to catch. Tyler Reed with a great job focusing on the ball, getting the ball back. It'll be first down for Western Oregon. The 21 yard line. Just outside the red zone, but Western Oregon looking to get this into a one score game. Curry now, looks like it's a designed run, hits the 20, 15, 10. Curry on the scurry. He'll pick up the first down. And time out on the field for injury. Player down for Eastern New Mexico. As soon as we get that, we will let you know who it is. But Michael Brown, Ty Curry in a hurry on that play. That was designed for him to run. Yeah, I believe it's Charles County for, for Eastern New Mexico down on the field as Ty Curry rolls out. Doesn't see a receiver and uses his speed. Gets down the field very quickly for a first down. It looks like a first and goal right inside the 10-yard line. Really, uh, again, we've been talking about 
the tale of two halves. It'll be very interesting to find out if Western Oregon is capitalizing on this drive, and they do make it a one-score game, Michael, exactly how Eastern New Mexico will go out and play because they look like they have really had their, their finger on the pulse of Western Oregon's defense most of this afternoon. But obviously, first, Western Oregon's got nine more yards to get in the end zone. Senior quarterback Ty Curry trying to get his team back in this game. Looking really good right now. First and goal, nine-yard line. Sampson and Reed together on the right-hand side, right on the bottom of your screen, a land in the backfield. And again, Curry with a designed run, taking it down to about the five-yard line. And a hard tackle on Ty Curry there. But uh, he holds onto the ball, picks up a positive gain, and sets up a, an easier attempt here at getting a touchdown right about the six-yard line. Willingham will come in at basically as a blocking tight end. Nico Jackson coming in for Amari Land. Justice Murphy will be at the top of your screen. Could be a steady dose of number 14 to finish this drive. Second and six on the six. Now it's going to be a throw out to Jackson. And man, I'll tell you, I know how bad they want that play. But he's got to just give it a little field, bit more time to develop. Deflected incomplete pass. It's third down. Yeah, you want to have more time to let that play develop, but he did have some pressure coming up the middle. and You have that quarterback has that timer in his head that says, I got to go, got to go. And, and he <laughs> tries to get it out to Nico real fast. While Nico also has some momentum going on the outside, ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. We'll set up a third down here from the six-yard line, third and goal from the six-yard line for Western Oregon. 7.23 left in the fourth quarter. Garrigan comes off the field again, just looking up there. Maybe a quick slant or a quarterback design draw. They'll send Sampson in motion. There he goes, Sampson is out, he's open. He gets to turn it upfield, but he drops the ball. Sampson was literally looking to run. And again, the pass was not in a place, Michael. Yeah, it was an aw awkward looking play where the ball's behind him and he has a reach back for it while he's trying to go forward. It'll be fourth down here. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to seven minutes, 18 seconds, 7.18, and start it on the snap. Thank you. Fourth down and goal from the six yard line right here. Ty Curry needs to get into the end zone, or somebody on the offense needs to get in the end zone. Biggest play of this game today. Curry is gonna throw. Went underneath, and it's incomplete. For the second time this afternoon, the Wolves will turn it over on downs. Ty Curry with a little bit of pressure there and has to get the ball out, throws it up the middle, allowing his receiver to get a chance to catch it. Ball deflected. Turnover on downs. Good job by Eastern New Mexico's defense to get a stop inside the red zone. Their offense is going to come out and grind and grind, pound as they have all day, and try to work this clock with seven minutes left, only one timeout for Western Oregon. Uh, three, in, three and outs are important here for the defense to try to get, keep themselves in this game. I can't imagine that they're going to put Wyatt Strand in too many situations, Michael, down here inside the 10-yard line to pitch the ball away. Terry is in the backfield. They'll hand it off. Big hit. Ian Russell up again for another tackle. He's had uh, quite a second half today. And that interior linebacker's having to come up and support. This is after a four yard gain with Terry. He's second and six. Now under seven minutes, trailing by 14, 35 to 21 on senior day. And they will work every second of this time clock as they try to uh, try to work this clock right now. David Valadares on the sideline, I'll tell you, he's gonna be a special player to watch next season. The second down play picks up about a net of three yards, but there are some younger players, and you can tell the culture of Western Oregon has changed. They're, are, they're imploring these guys to stay as focused as they can. Staying focused. Third and two, Michael. Third and two. You just hope that the defense can come up and make a stop here. As Wyatt for Eastern New Mexico has had control of the game the whole day is letting this clock run down before he snaps the ball. 
Yeah, Wyatt Strand, very, very savvy. Senior quarterback for the Greyhounds. And I think that Western Oregon just had the play that maybe, maybe saved the day. They're saying Hag on the stop. 44 Hag on the stop, who we said his name quite a bit here. Again, the second half of the season, EJ Hag has played very, very well. And he gets a hit and then able to wrap up. The rest of the defense comes to finish the job off. Special teams unit comes out for Eastern New Mexico. With five minutes and 20 seconds left, Western Oregon hoping to get a good return. Or, hey, I take a block, recover it for a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Punt is away, it is clean. Reed is trying to get everybody away. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That is an absolute disaster. Curtis Anderson. The run of the field is the ball was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. Curtis First down, Anderson. Eastern New Mexico. It, I will tell you, there was great communication. Reed was telling everybody, get away. Yeah, you hear the Peter calls across the field. And uh, with the punt being so under, under punted, I guess would be the best <laughs> way of saying it. Uh, with it being such a short punt. Uh, the defenders and the special teams players don't know where the ball is, unfortunately for Western Oregon. It hits Curtis Anderson. He tries to recover the ball, but the ball is kicked around, and Eastern New Mexico comes up with the ball, and now they'll just continue to work the clock as they were before. Uh, if Western Oregon gets a chance to get the ball back. It won't be Pitch until under two Smith. minutes. Pitch to Smith. Late flag coming in. Another flag coming in. Hashtag underpunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Michael. I love it. Well, if the ball is underthrown, <laughs> why wouldn't it be an underpunt? <laughs> 451. Multiple flags, maybe offsetting. So she see shortly and try to see if the clock stops. Personal foul. Them going out of Lock will the waste. Offense number nine. 15 yard penalty. It's first down. Justin May or Miniweather will be called for the for the block, the blocking penalty. Going all the way back, Miniweather goes back to that first quarter. He's the one that got that wailing duck of a 17-yard reception for a first down. Underthrown pass. Oh, underthrown pass. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> first down in 20 on the 30, and the clock is rolling, and it's becoming a major factor in this game. Wyatt Strand hands it off. Terry's in trouble, he'll go down. And Ian Russell uh, definitely is going to be playing himself into a lot of playing time moving forward. Great job by Ian Russell getting in the backfield, taking the running back down at around his ankles. A good stop by them as the clock continues to run. Second and 26 from the 30 yard line. Can't for imagine Eastern New Mexico. Michael, I can't imagine for any reason again that the coaching staff for Eastern New Mexico would have any reason to put the ball in the air. So if we do some quick math right now, Western Oregon will not see this football till close to the three minute mark. Assuming they can stop them here. Second and 26. And you see as the defensive line, uh, they're starting to figure out this Eastern New Mexico offensive line. And a great job by Blaine Burnett in the backfield. Another senior coming up with a big play here for the defense. As it's third and 26 from the 26 yard line. They won't hike this ball until near the three minute mark, Michael. And then they're going to take another. You see Western Oregon get, take a timeout at that point. Have to. Absolutely. Just to try to save that extra 30 seconds as they get the ball back and try to score and then get an onside kick to get back in this game. Five, four, they do hike it. And now can you get him to go out of bounds? Can you get him to go out of bounds? That clock is stopped. That is a huge favor. Yeah, it does, uh, does look like the clock has stopped. No, they, they wind it again. Because he's forced out of bounds, right, Michael? Yeah, this is momentum's going forward and yeah. not backwards. 
Um, yeah, again, I thought he did it himself, though. So yeah, that's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's Can't see it from, so from over here. But, again, the clock is running. Look for Western to get the ball back with about two minutes and 30 seconds left. Being a uh, fast-paced offense here. It's a good snap. Punt was away, full block was on. And again, great bounce for Eastern New Mexico. At the 26 yard line, two minutes and 21 seconds remaining. Curtis Anderson was on full jailbreak. Twenty-one points is all Western Oregon's been able to muster this afternoon. And they're trailing by 14 with two minutes and 21 seconds. Ty Curry will come out in the shotgun. And this is going to have to be as quick a score as you could pretty much get your hands on. I would imagine they're going to look to get things downfield immediately. Pressure being shown in a different way from New Mexico. Curry goes forward and he'll get taken down after a short gain. But again, staying inbounds and the clock continues to roll. Quincy Arsenault, the defensive end, able to uh, work his way to the backfield and as Ty Curry stepped up to try to run, Quincy comes from behind, takes him down. Western Oregon second and eight. Now under two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter and the Wolves down 14. Curry now over the middle. He finds Samson. Go, go, Samson baby. trying to turn it upfield. And he goes out of bounds. That will stop the clock with the moving of the chains with one minute and 49 seconds. Playmaker Samson able to get his hands on the ball, work his way down, trying to find some blocks down the field. He did come up a little bit limp there, but uh, still on the field as Ty Curry trying to get his team down the field. Playmaker Samson, I love it. First down and 10 on the 48, and Curry is going straight back to the air. Now he's going to have to run, and he's taken down. And again, this could be the final timeout right here, Michael. But they're going to get him right back up. Hey, special thanks to Nikki. Thanks for the great replays. Thanks for all the help and being a part of our team here at KWVT. I know you're moving on to bigger and better things. You've been a very important part of it. Curry now. To the sideline, Thomas Wright at the 40 goes out of bounds. Thomas Wright working his way down the field, comes back, the ball there right where it needed to be at the sideline, stops the clock, first down for Western Oregon at the 40 yard line. A minute 18 left in this game. Still have the timeout, Michael, but the score is going to have to come pretty quick and then you're going to have to get all sorts of lucky. Curry. Set to throw again, steps up, goes underneath the read, read on the slant, takes it down to the 20. Again, clock stops at 110 until they move the chains. Curry will be in a hurry, so will this offense. In total hurry up mode. Smart play by Curry, downs it immediately, stopping the clock with a minute and three seconds. Downs it off the center's leg, but it still works the same. Yeah, great job by Western Oregon in their two-minute drill here, trying to work their way down the field. Eastern New Mexico reeling a little bit, but they probably feel comfortable with a two-touchdown lead and a minute left, playing a, a softer zone here, trying to make sure nobody gets past them and scores. Ty Curry is going to have to do this through the air. He will have Tyler Reed, Thomas Wright, Marquis Sampson, and Jaron Ford in this set. Curry steps up, looks right, goes back left, has a man open and Thomas Wright. Thomas Wright, touchdown! 19 yard strike, Curry to Thomas Wright. Great job by Curry there, has a perfect pocket, looks around, finally finds his receiver open. Right, right at the goal line, dives in. Touchdown for Western Oregon, extra point to come to get within seven points with 55 seconds left in the game. Double nickels, 55 seconds remaining. Andrew Gross, extra point coming up. Looming very large. Good snap. Kick is up. Kick is no good. Well, if they're gonna add some drama to it, if they wanna get an onside kick, score a touchdown, 
Going to have to have a two-point conversion in order to go to overtime. But of course, the onside kick coming up is the most important thing right now to see if Western Oregon can get the ball back and try to stay in this game. Got to love the competitive spirit. Got to love the grit. And you got to love the no-quit attitude of this team today. Western Oregon through penalties and some just some unfortunate plays are in a really tough situation with 55 seconds trailing by eight. But these two teams that are very similar just as far as how they've played this season, both I think overachieving personally, like doing very well against some bigger schools. It's been nice to see them both fight today in Western Oregon. Being down three scores could have give, given up uh, with the GNAC championship already in tow, but uh, they decided to keep playing in this fourth quarter. And uh, at least uh, the seniors know they gave everything they could, no matter what happens here with this onside kick. Seven plays, 74 yards. Ty Curry to Thomas Wright on the 19-yard score, bringing us to our score of 35-27 after the Andrew Gross missed point after attempt. Hands team out for the Greyhounds, and Gross on the onside kick. Gets a favorable bounce, ball is loose. But there is no sign from Western Oregon that they recovered. It looks like the Greyhounds will have the ball, Michael. There'll be one timeout, uh, and barring a very strange play of any sort of miscommunication. Charles County, who was injured just a little while ago down the field, this time able to come up and get the onside kick to save the game the for ball Eastern was New Mexico. Legally by the kicking team at the 43-yard line. It's first down, Eastern New Mexico, from that spot. So or you can hope that maybe Eastern New Mexico wants to score again and may have a chance to turn it over, but it looks like they're in the victory formation. Well, on behalf of Michael Brown, I, Matt Palumbo, want to thank everybody down in the truck for KWVT. Boys upstairs, Andy, Tony, Ken, Michael, Don. John, I know you're not here. Don with two wins. That's right. It's been a great season. Six opportunities to do something that uh, is really fun to do. And uh, yeah, my third season, I thank you for, uh, for all this. It's been really fun, especially watching this Western Oregon team build over the last few years. It's, uh, it's really awesome to see. 12 outgoing seniors today, unfortunately, are going to lose. But Western Oregon's future looks extremely bright. Final score today, as soon as the clock hits, triple zeros will be 35 to 27. Dad, if you're listening, so long. I love you. Uh, thank you for everything. I hope you were listening to the game. Talk to you soon. On behalf of football fans, wherever you may be, have a great day. Be well and good night, everybody.